trying to be Jeremy Clarkson and failed miserably. And you can't. It. Yeah, he was trying to be it. But Matt LeBlanc was just being Matt LeBlanc. He just, like, Jeremy Clarkson just has that perfect mix of old man, British, I don't give a hell, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't give a frick. I'm too old now. I don't really care. <laughs> like, fire me, what are you going to do? I'm rich. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the perfect combination. Yeah. And they're all real, and the, all three of them realize, if we stay together, we can do whatever the hell we want. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know where they're at, but I'm sure they're making a ton of money. Amazon. Oh, really? And they, they they had so much money. They were talking about. We won't discuss how much Amazon has given to us, <laughs> but uh, we're just like we don't know what to do half the time because it's like just do stuff. That's why the second season they got hurt because there was no one trying to tell them you can't do this for <laughs> money reasons or you can't do this because it's not safe. It was just Jeff Bezos like, how much more? <laughs> just make that back. <laughs> It'd be so. It'd be awesome to be the richest man in the world, and like you love a TV show, so you just go no. That really yeah. does feel like it. Charles yeah. in charge. You're coming back. <laughs> yeah. Mork and Mindy. We'll work around it. <laughs> CGI him in. <laughs> oh man. All right. Let's get started. Yep. All oh. right. Uh, for once, I'm in a great mood, and Harry is grumpy as fuck. I'm not grumpy. I'm just on one. I'm just <laughs> like I'm just ready to bite someone's head off or something. All right. Oh, here we go. Welcome to We Are Libertarians. I'm your host, Chris Spangle. We bring you all of the irreverence modern politics deserves while putting people before political parties. We examine current events from a libertarian perspective with the goal of leaving you better informed. Please be sure to rate and review us on iTunes, like us on Facebook, and become a subscriber on Patreon or at WeAreLibertarians.com. Without your financial support, independent media like this cannot exist. In exchange for supporting our program, we give you great bonus content. This show is crowdsourced, so you can send us news with the hashtag WALnews or in our Facebook group or Discord channel. We are always taking your questions or comments via email at editor at WeAreLibertarians.com. Please be warned that this show is raw, unedited, and authentic, so the language is strong and sometimes offensive. In this show, we're going to cover the Flynn and Russiagate, a new CIA, gay Nazi cakes, going to make Harry bake the cake. (laughs) We're going to talk about uh, Meghan Markle and her engagement to Prince Harry and uh, how she's being flogged by the IRS. And we're going to talk about Bitcoin being a crime. But with me, as always, let me introduce my... uh, Adorb's co-host, Harry. This is the first time we've had music uh, mixing live. It's awesome, and it's like everything I always love about talk radio is this live read stuff. Yeah. This is what I love. I've got, I haven't put in any sound effects in, but we've got, you know. Uh, here, ladies, yeah. oh, here, 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 see, I'm not good at it's it yet. Week, Jeremiah Moreland, Dakota Davis, explore life in Henry County, Indiana. It's a show about our circle of friends, public officials. You're hanging out with Rob again? No, no. <laughs> Actually, yeah, Rob and I have 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 been uh, talking a little bit on text message, oh. and I got him in trouble. Uh, <laughs> we won't get into it. I feel bad, but I got him in trouble with his wife, his new his new wife. I uh, see. So you Harry is. Uh, I'm normally like in the last couple months. I've been the the grumpy one, and mm-hmm. I've been sick. I'm finally feeling better. Uh, Harry, though, walked in here. You know, he's changing everybody's Discord nicknames, telling them that they're going to like it or else they're going to get points deducted. He's yelling at me. He's telling me I'm not going to do my show prep and I don't care what you think. <laughs> he's just he's bringing balls and putting them on my table. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm you're you're on, and then you were you first thing you didn't even say hello. You just walked in and you started mocking Apple, yep. which you know I've got two iPads, a Mac, and a, and an iPhone in front of me. And this thing. And, uh, the, yes, the Mac screen in the back. Like, mm-hmm. you know I love Mac, but you just came in looking for a fight today, didn't you? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'm walking everywhere. And, uh, I was even at the tire store debating about tires. Wanted to go put snow tires on the Subaru today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you were mocking Google this week, Galt says. Yep. Well, are you okay? I um The... Not getting a lot of an adult content through, uh, content through the week. Yeah, that content oh, through the week. I hear you're getting a lot finally of finally getting getting it to me. I hear you're getting a lot of adult content. Just a little. <laughs> uh, 
you know, so I've been like trying to hang out with people uh, online while I'm at home with Gunther and about the two different things I can find online that people actually interact with you and actually can hang out with people are uh, like streamers. But sometimes Twitch streamers get, you know, you know, they'll, they get flaky. Right. And the unflaky person that you can that actually will stick to a schedule is a cam girl. <laughs> They're awesome. <laughs> Freaking awesome to hang out with. OK. What? what? All right. I guess. Yeah. Like paying for friendship, like a, a fraternity. Never paid, okay? okay. <laughs> you don't yeah. pay cam girls to hang out with you? Never. I will never pay them. Bl- I will help Black, with... black privilege. That's what that is right there. <laughs> I will get in, and if they have a charity, I will donate to their charities. That's just fun. It's just like, hey, donate this month. And I got the charity going on. I will do that. That's awesome. Nice. Okay, so <laughs> where do you find said cam girls to hang out with? Um... I don't want anyone else trolling me or fighting me. There's thousands of sites. <laughs> Screw you, people. Find your own cam girls, he yeah. says. Oh, well, this is this is quite the revelation. Yeah, Harry just came in here on a tear. Yep. Uh, it, well, the thing is, like, I get I get tired of people talking about how awesome Apple products are. All this is done about go. Apple. And I was like, there's only really two good reasons to take Apple. One, um, you don't want to know about tech. You don't want to care. You want things to work. push button, click, because you either you're a boomer or an idiot. Uh, the second one is that you want security, but you're too dumb to set any of it up, and you need to be inside of a, a sandbox that will keep you safe. Apple, perfect. Any other reason, you're lying to yourself, and you just keep smelling your own parts. You think you think you're being more pretentious because the you know all Apple products are like they're old. They're several years behind the curve. Their phones are they're barely catching up with Samsung, and their phones break. Like I'm waiting. I so can't wait until the iPhone 10 X. I'm calling it the X. I like I like it. It seems cooler calling it the X. I'm waiting for that one phone to either a explode. B, the face ID to break and lock people out of their phones or lock them out of apps, which I can't wait for that to happen because it's going to, yeah, I'm going to feel bad for them, but I'm going to still laugh at them at the same freaking time. Or the, uh, so like the battery blows, a face ID stops working, or the simple ID of the simple thing that most iPhones have, a battery problem. They just stop charging or they don't charge the whole day. I've had an iPhone for eight years i've never had that problem i've never broken a screen my phone always works i've just never had a problem i don't have uh i don't have uh spam i don't have bugs i don't mm-hmm. have that's, that's the same you know? box i'm talking to you about yeah that exactly. bug that bug thing because you don't want to deal with that stuff that's yeah see that right. makes sense those are legitimate reasons to take apple okay? you know what chris bengal doesn't like in his problem in his life problems what? he doesn't like hassles don't hassle me bro and you know what apple's hassle free yeah, pretty much. You you pay for it, but yeah, it right. is hassle free. Like I, lo- but the thing is, like, and I tell people, like, why do you use Linux operating system? Because I like fiddling with stuff. Yeah, you know, you know, I uh, is Linux cool? I wish more people would use Linux. Yeah, but most people aren't going to fiddle with things. It's the main reason why people keep buying brand new cars because they don't want to fiddle with it. I I spent fifteen years on Windows stuff. I just. Uh... I just don't like it. I don't like I don't like the new operating system. Every time at work I have to go fiddle with ten. I'm just like this is this sucks. Windows, I like I like Mac's operating system. Windows better. ten is horrible. It's a horrible operating system. Yeah. Windows eight is so much better. All those people out there are like, oh how are you talking about Windows eight is a beautiful operating system. You just couldn't get thick the your thick skulls with the start button being gone because the charm menu with a nice gigantic curved monitor. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay. All right. Well, I have to endure this twice this week because Galt will be here on uh, Thursday, either with Tad Western or I'm going to call Brian Nichols and see what he's up to. Good old Uncle Tad. I, but I think Tad will be here. You never know. He, he, I, had, I had to send the Western Union out on horseback to find uh, Tad. Uh, and he's, he wasn't on his ranch when I drove out there in my Model T truck, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. We're going to talk about all the tax bill stuff and uh, uh, some of uh, the Trump accomplishments, actually, on Thursday. So, but tonight we're going to, we got a bunch of stories, a lot of crazy stuff in the news. There's, it's just like, you know, Greg always used to say, and he was so right, could you imagine if Hillary Clinton got elected president? Like, there's this new app uh, on iPhone that I've been playing called, uh, what is it? HQ Quiz, I think it is. And and it's like, it's, it's going to be the next hot app. Is it? HQ Quiz. And it's really uh, pretty cool. It's it's like this video app 
uh, we got to hurry up and get done by nine so I can play the the, the trivia game. You play trivia, 12 questions oh. with people, and it's live streaming. Mm -hmm. There's a host, and you answer 12 questions, and you can win $1,000. And it's it's just incredible. But I'm just watching, like, all the little comments scroll through, and it's a bunch of people talking about Trump and politics. That never happened in the Obama era. Never. Never. That would not happen if Hillary were Clinton. Like, people are engaged to such an enormous level. It's why this program... Is I can I can I I would I can't imagine there's a faster growing libertarian talk show out there. Uh, we're growing a thousand a month, and it's because people are engaged and interested in politics. So, uh, I, I just to me seeing that and seeing all these people talking about Trump by the thousands and this quick scroll, there's like three hundred thousand people playing this game at once at three and at nine, and I just realized like wow, people are really engaged like. If Hillary were president, no one would care mm -hmm. <laughs> at all. They'd check out. They'd right. check out. Yeah. Check out again like they've checked out for eight years. Exactly. Like I've, It's weird watching all these people discuss the tax plan and how they're totally upset about like the process. Like They're approving bills at 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. And I'm like, where have you been? This right. Been really? Vibbert. Oh, yeah. Great, yeah, yeah. Figured, you know. Vibbert. What a pain in the ass. He, he Well, Vivert's in the Dear Leader Circle, so when he sees that we're uh, doing the show live mm -hmm. on Facebook Live to our Patreon subscribers, $10 a month and up, and you get access to the private F Patreon group on Facebook, and you can watch the live stream and, and chat with everybody, Vivert gets on the, in there and just starts calling us. Mm. But, yeah, people are really engaged at a mm -hmm. really high level right now, and it's really cool. You also, if you have your Patreon goes also, if you're in the Discord server, you actually get special flair for that, for, yes. your, uh, for your Discord level. But, yeah, people are engaged. People are knowledgeable. People are willing to discuss this bill. And, and it's also weird to watch people, like, especially Democrats, will watch, like, wow, this is scathing than Trump, but still check, uh, fact check it and go, like, nope, this is wrong. I hate this tax bill, but what you're saying about it is wrong. Yeah. I'm like, wow. They're engaged. They care because usually the only thing they care about is what net neutrality. They all care about that, but other than that, checked right out. Right. You know, it's neat. Yeah, it, awesome. it is. It's cool. And even if if people don't disagree, and like, there's a lot of stuff that's going on. We'll talk about, you know, so like we'll talk about Roy Moore later. Things like Roy Moore, Russia Gate. I know, I know. He he made a face, but the, the, I just I just let's do it now. Okay, just quick. Go to the bathroom. Just you go ahead. You can if you want. But because I think it applies. Um, so today, the Washington Post uh, put out a report that Debbie Wasson, Wesson Gibson, as we told you, she was uh, she was not the 14 year old or the 15 year old that alleged rape. Uh, she was someone who was of uh, consenting age, according to law, that said that she uh, dated more when she was 17 and he was 34. And Moore has come out and repeatedly called all of these women liars. They're making it up. He said, uh, I think it was Gibson that he said he knew, but then now he says he doesn't know any of them. He's, he's like, it would make it, it would make it a little more, um, uh, like, I'd be a little less annoyed by this whole situation if he were, if he weren't so slippery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, he's yeah. just, he's just so scummy. And so scummy about it, and like nothing about his defense. You can tell he's just lying through his teeth, and you know, it, it, it's just it's clear at this point, like it's conspiracy theory. If you think that the Washington Post just made all this stuff up, like if you really dig into it and you read through all the accusers' accounts, you read through accounts that they didn't publish through the Project Veritas sting, like it's very clear that there was good investigative journalism taking place here. Mm -hmm. And it's a conspiracy theory if you don't think that he was 34 and trying to date 15-year-old girls. Right. Like, he just was. So there's there's just this cognitive dissonance that is going on in the Republican Party where they're just actively falling for propaganda and saying, like, no, this isn't true. He's telling the truth. Well, no, I mean, they're, the facts are the facts. And you can say, like, all right, well, listen, here's here's the deal. I think he probably is a scumbag, but I think he aligns with my values better than the Democrat, and we're sending a person to Washington to vote. The win and the Republican seat, that matters more to me than what he may have done 40 years ago. Okay, that's at least an intellectually honest argument. 
Yes. It, it is yes. An, an intellectual, honest argument to say, nah, that I just don't, I choose not to believe these things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's just ignoring evidence on the table. Right. Uh, one is acknowledging it and you just but making a decision that most people, most most people are just uncomfortable, like making or or just uh, taking, you know, right. that's an uncomfortable position to take. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, but they're at least honest about it and admitting things. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it, so you have to just at, at a certain point, libertarians can't fall into the same trap as conservatives and liberals in that we we can be skeptical of the media. And there will be points this week where we talk about some of these news stories where I will point out just very clear failures in the media. You know, like Brian uh, was the ABC reporter, Brian Ross, I think his name is. He, he put out the report that, you know, uh, Flynn was essentially going to uh, snitch on Trump, and mm-hmm. that sent the market tanking. You know, well, mm-hmm. that guy made a mistake, and that's – he didn't mean it maliciously, I don't think. I think he was just – malicious versus incompetence are two different things. The intent matters. And there, there are points where the media makes mistakes. There's points where their bias gets in the way of things, but – you you shouldn't fall into what so many Tea Party Republicans and so many um, alt right people fall into, or Antifa people, where they just start completely ignoring that certain things are happening in the world, and that and they just say that all media is bad. Like the thing that makes me cringe so hard is when I see a fellow libertarian say, "Well, that's from the Washington Post. I'm not going to believe it." Yeah. Well, you just can't just dismiss an entire newspaper. Because I like, can't watch me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Well, then you're dumb. Like, what are you going to read? Like, you're going to read uh, Conservative Treehouse and Reason, and those are going to be your sources of information? <laughs> well, I believe InfoWars. It's like, no, you have to be cr- a critical thinker in this day and age. You have to read sources and say what's credible, what's not. And that's also the beauty of being uh, Trump being president is that people are questioning sources. Absolutely. Actually looking at people's sources and questioning and understanding. Now, there's still some old guard people that will take it, listen, believe, and go, but it's it's nice to see that. Now. Right. And they wouldn't have done that if a lot of people didn't like start questioning the media for the whole Trump, Russia, Russia, Russia thing. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's, and it's, it's, it's an awesome refreshing. It, it, it is, and I think there is a lot of benefit to uh, the propaganda, basically, that Trump has wrought on, on our politics and has brought to the presidential level and the national dialogue because it, it, it makes us more skeptical and it makes us better consumers of news. And that's always what this program has been about is what is the truth? What, what should we believe? What are the facts about this current event? And, I mean, if you go back in, in the feed and listen to the show report, well, that's what we did in 2013. We broke down the news. Uh, so, but there is, you know, with this Roy Moore stuff, um, she was, Debbie Wesson Gibson was interacted at calling out boxes of Christmas decorations last week when she noticed a storage bin she said she'd forgotten about. Inside was a scrapbook from her senior year of high school and taped to a page titled, Those Who Inspire, was a graduation card. Happy graduation, Debbie. It read in slanted cursed handwriting, I wanted to give you this card myself. I know that you'll be a success in anything you do, Roy. Uh, It was written by Roy Moore, and uh, she basically said, I didn't want to bring this out because uh, the campaign says these allegations are completely false, they're malicious. Specifically, I do not know any of these women. Um, So... Gibson said that after finding the scrapbook, she was not sure whether to make it public given the threat she received after publication of the original story. Then she heard what Moore said last week, she said, and and contacted the Post. He called me a liar, said Gibson, who says she does not openly, she not only openly dated Moore when she was 17, but later joined him in passing out flyers during his campaign for circuit court judge in 82 and exchanged Christmas cards with him over the years. Roy Moore made an egregious mistake in attacking the only that one thing, my integrity. So, so here's somebody who is not, not even like an anti Roy Moore person. She was contacted by the Post and said, "Did you date him while you were a teenager?" She said, "Yes, I was 17." And then he started attacking her, and she's like, "You know what? F you, buddy." <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and this is kind of the pattern. And Jake Tapper tweeted this out today, wh- whom I love. Everybody have a long-standing, loving relationship via Twitter with Jake Tapper. Um, I know, Harry. Quit shaking your head at me. But uh, 
he basically outlined the propagandist techniques of Breitbart and Moore and Bannon, Steve Bannon. One, all, all the Alabama women accusing Moore of improper behavior, sexually molesting a 14-year-old, sexually assaulting a 16-year-old, are lying. Two, denial of the existence of evidence. And three, change the conversation to abortion. And so that's exactly what they're doing, which mm-hmm. is saying this never happened. Yeah. They're all liars. Mm-hmm. The media is making up facts. Mm-hmm. And even if all that's true, do you want somebody who believes in abortion in the Senate? And man, that's so that's great propaganda, Harry. It's going against what everyone's brain naturally does and like what ruins people's critical thinking. You know, so they're uh, denying denying the evidence, mm-hmm. creating a straw man, mm-hmm. right? And then deflecting and moving you on, you on to a, a worse analogy, a faulty analogy. Right. You know, because what's the truth? Let's say, let's take two seconds and think about this. Abortion is an issue that is used to divide the left and the right. Mm-hmm. Libertarians, you can be a pro-life or a pro-choice libertarian, because as long as you don't, the government doesn't force anybody to have an abortion, you, then you don't you don't really care. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's really one of those issues where y- you will have some libertarians who will say there should be force government force or private security forces used to prevent people from having an abortion i mean but those i those people are not a large percentage uh it it really comes down to personal personal morality like do you think abortion is right or wrong Uh, well if you're a pro-life libertarian you believe that the the life inside of the mother deserves the right to life liberty and property Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, they should not be terminated because they are a human being. But there are plenty of libertarians who are pro-choice libertarians. And the, and the Libertarian Party doesn't take a stance on it. The Libertarian Movement doesn't take a stance on it because it's one of those issues that we realize is a, an issue of the heart. And it comes down to, can I persuade you that that is a living child inside of a mother? And can you persuade me that I'm wrong? Uh, and through that dialogue... Hopefully one of us or both of us will come to a better understanding. And from my perspective, hopefully I can convince you not to have an abortion. Yep. Uh, but it is, it is not my job to use the government to pull out a gun and stop you from having an abortion. My job is better served by trying to help you do several things. Understand the cost, the moral and ethical and emotional cost of having an abortion. Uh, what what are the what are your hesitations towards having a, a, a child? What societal issues can we fix to help encourage mothers to carry their children to term and either give them up for adoption or to find other avenues? I mean, so it, it it's just one of those issues that is better served in the it's better solved in the private sector. It's it's not something that is really going to change in the public sphere. So the threat of Doug Jones or Roy Moore being the single dividing vote, deciding vote to overturn Roe uh, Roe versus Wade, it's just not going to happen. Like, there's under no circumstances can I sit here and think of any circumstance where the Alabama Senate race will determine the outcome of abortion in America at the federal level when really it's a court decision that must be over, that must be undone. Like, you need a new Supreme Court. So, yeah. it, But it is so divisive that gun rights and abortion are always used to drive people one way or the other, and yeah. immigration now, too. Mm-hmm. And they are third rails of politics and podcasting and radio. Um, and there's, there's not that many Republican seats that are safe enough to even want to put that on the table, to want to debate it, to want to get pulled on the new shows about it. They're more of like, it's there, I can discuss it, and to churn up my base for fundraising. Other than that, they don't want most Republicans and, and uh, don't want to discuss it. Yeah. And Democrats use it for fundraising. That's the only thing they really use it for. Exactly right. They're taking their uh, they're taking their rights away. They're taking a woman's uh, reproductive rights away. And it's like you know, hey, you know, it's they're not discussing what these rights are. And it's only one freaking organization. And it was slave. And it was started by someone who believed in eugenics. While they're tearing down slave owner statues, why don't they go ahead and tear down Planned Parenthood too? Because of who started it, right? But they won't do that. Margaret Sanger, who whose goal was part, she was part of the eugenics movement a hundred years ago, that wanted to purify and basically kill black babies. I mean, she was a virulent racist. Mm-hmm. And if you go, 
uh, Greg, former co-host on the show, got a month-long suspension on Facebook for posting one of her quotes because it was so racist yep. that it was a, a marked hate speech. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, uh, it, it, it's just really important for you to sit and think critically. Okay, so Doug Jones is for abortion and Roy Moore's not, but is Roy Moore going to be the deciding vote on abortion? No. But what, what is the cost if you're in Alabama and you're sitting here and you're thinking, you know, I just can't write in Ron Bishop. He's got no, no chance to win. I'm going to vote for Roy Moore or Doug Jones because this is, you know, I'm either going to stop Roy Moore or I'm going to stop Doug Jones. And you've, and you've not decided to write in the, the libertarian Correct. in Ron Bishop, the person who most agrees with your values mm -hmm. and didn't touch a 14-year-old inappropriately and didn't allegedly... Uh, molest a, uh, aggressively assault a 16 year old girl mm -hmm. like if you vote for Roy Moore that vote is an extension of your values as is Doug Jones yep. and so here's where I come down on it a vote for Roy Moore or a vote for Doug Jones or a vote for Hillary Clinton or a vote for Donald Trump or a vote for any politician is an extension of your personal values and you are saying as a voter these are the things that I believe, and I am handing the power of government force to this person. Can you say that Roy Moore is a person that deserves to have the force of government behind his value system? I personally can't. Now, you have to make that decision if you're a voter. In 2016, you had to make the decision, is Donald Trump somebody that I can live with? Many people in the We Are Libertarians universe voted for Donald Trump because they felt it was. I didn't. I voted for Gary Johnson because I felt that Gary Johnson was the correct extension of my values. Did I agree with him on everything? No. But did I agree with him more than I agreed with basically the moral cancer that is Donald Trump or the moral cancer and absolute corrupt fraud that is Hillary Clinton that should be in jail? Mm -hmm. Like. No, I can't vote for either of these people. Yeah, and that like the more proof of the pudding why Clinton should be in jail comes out for the whole Flynn and Russia thing. Like one hundred percent. That each each article, it's just more of a okay. This is not damning on Trump. This is damning on on Hillary. This, you know, like or then it's like, well, what else is left out? What? Okay, sorry, I, I don't want to bury the lead, but you know, like no. it's yeah, yeah. You go into it. It's just like they're they're just Swiss cheesing the whole freaking quote-unquote justice system which is screwed up to in the first place you know it's the reason why ross Ulrich's already going to spend the rest of it's going to spend the rest of his life in jail because the justice system's all screwed up yeah but if you if want to play the game of the freaking justice system like they're just apparently you can pay your way out of it so before we jump into michael flynn let's to that point there was a guy named peter strock i think i'm saying his name right s-t-r-z-o-k and he's a former FBI official who was recently fired from the Mueller investigation. And here's a guy who was close to Comey and apparently a high-ranking FBI because this guy was like the Forrest Gump of the FBI over the last couple years. He interviewed uh, Huma Abedin and a, and a few of the Clinton aides. He was on the team that investigated the Clinton emails. He was appointed to the Mueller investigation into Trump. He interviewed Flynn. He's the one that Flynn lied to. And turns out, by the way, Huma Abedin and one other uh, aide that I cannot remember, uh, that I can't remember her name, they both lied yeah. to this FBI investigator. Mm -hmm. Same one. Michael Flynn lied to this FBI investigator. Michael Flynn is in jail or going to jail or is at least going to have a criminal record after mm -hmm. a long distinguished service record to this nation. Meanwhile, Huma Abedin goes free. And there's not any kind of charge against her whatsoever. Correct. Right. Yeah. Hillary Clinton can lie to the FBI, but Paul Manafort can't. <laughs> nope. I mean, you so, got an R in front of your name. You can't do that. It's more proof of it, like the crappy deep state. You it, know? Exactly right. You know, it's like okay, maybe this there's more to this because the same people are breaking the same laws, but they're not on the same team. And I'm talking about just Republican or Democrat. They're just not on the same team, and mm -hmm. they're getting away with it. And here's the proof, and this is a really important story because what this does is this gives cover to Trump 
So every time the Russia investigation is brought up, he can call into question the entire investigation because of this story I'm about to read you. He, he could fire Mueller if he wanted to over this. Yes. Now, it isn't, fu- it isn't obstruction of justice if Trump fires Comey or Trump fires Mueller or any of that. It's obstruction if the president destroys evidence or he directs people to uh, people that are in his employ uh, that he employs to do or not do or not say certain things. So, like, if he goes to somebody and says, your job depends on you lying, then that's obstruction of justice. Firing Mueller or firing Comey are not in and of itself obstruction. In my opinion, it, it, Flynn, there's some, based on the timelines, question if Trump obstructed justice by, he, he found out apparently that Flynn lied to the FBI and then he fired Flynn. And after he learned that Flynn had lied, he said to uh, Comey, you know, take it easy on Flynn. That's not... That was never obstruction of justice. We covered that when it first came out. It, it was an obstruction. It was a very uh, vanilla statement. It was expressing a sentiment, but it wasn't a very clear statement that you could prove as him trying to obstruct justice. He's the president. He could say, stop this investigation. I'm in charge of the FBI. I'm commanding you to stop this investigation. He didn't do that. Uh, and likewise, Mueller, when he found out that his employee... Uh, Peter Strzok, was on this investigation and was sending text messages to his mistress that were anti-Trump text messages. Uh, He fired the man and uh, clearly took action, basically saying, you know, I found out that this person has these political views and I let them go. So it, it isn't that he's exactly covering up anything. He's not. He's just basically saying... I had to let him go for these reasons. So, uh, Strzok is the number two was the number two official leading probe into the Clinton email server. He was also on the Mueller investigation and apparently anti-Trump. So, all of these all of these different points in the story kind of taint the Mueller investigation and can be used for propaganda technique techniques and saying, "Look, this is all biased against me. They've mm-hmm. got nothing." Yeah, and that's probably like in 2020. That's going to be they're going to use all this for fuel in the campaign. Right, everything they're just going to just taint it, take it down because they've set it up. They set themselves wide open on this freaking Russia, Russia um, uh, witch hunt because they still haven't found collusion. They uh, the one different crime they can get anyone to a police is just lying to FBI officers right. over an incident that they knew about but cleared everybody up. But there's more. But there's just more to show for that the Democratic Party was like that had influence inside. So, uh, not the Democratic Party. Sorry, that Hillary had influence inside there mm-hmm. and was using them and that influence to uh, change one documents like the wording of documents when they were released to the public, so it's worded carefully so it doesn't sound too bad. Right. right and we're not talking about like well you know it's because of their campaign. It's like no, it was more of a like directed. Uh, editing of documents so there's no criminal liability well for what you're referring thank you for reminding me but uh one source told the news outlet that uh, cnn that electronic records reveal that struck changed the language from grossly negligent to extremely careless scrubbing a keyword that could have had legal ramifications for clinton and comey's statement before the elections so an individual who mishandled classified material could be prosecuted under federal law for gross negligence. Mm-hmm. So Strzok is the one who basically covered Hillary's ass. Yep. Number two at the FBI, I can't think of his, his name off the top of my head, a- at the same time was funneling money to Terry McAuliffe through his wife. I mean, it's, it's just there's, there's a ton here that, that can point mm-hmm. to the deep state trying to take down Trump. Yeah. Yep, or, or they've got someone like, well, they donated too much. They donated past their maximum of cash. 
That's what they got. You got someone donating behind their maxim, but everyone else does. But they either send it to a pack or they make they give it to a friend and they do and they get them to donate it. So everyone else does it, you know. So but he'd be the only person that's going to go to jail for you know donating, right? You know, you know, and it's all they've got. It's all this little petty stuff, which most people sit around and go, "Man, that's petty. That's some crap." Because they all know that, you know, because in 2020 they're going to use the same tactics. Like, well, you know. Donald Trump gets all this different money from that. Well, he's a billionaire. He doesn't need their money, and the unions donate more collectively. Yeah. Here's been my theory on the Russia Russia gate, I guess we'll call it, the entire yes. time. And it, it just becomes clear that this is exactly what it is. Someone somewhere within the deep state and the left or the anti-never-Trumper Republicans mm-hmm. or all of them together at sort of the same time at, at Washington cocktail parties – in the 2016 campaign heard uh, somebody started the Russia rumor that there were ties, that they heard that uh, Papadopoulos was meeting with somebody. And then the dossier, the steel dossier comes out and he's peeing on Russian hookers. And Mm -hmm. there's parts of this that are true or not true. And there's collaboration between WikiLeaks and it, and it just gets started and it all looks really sorted. So the special counsel gets appointed and I'm not going to say that people intentionally started an investigation to entrap the Trump campaign and the, and Trump himself, but it's it's sort of what I've thought the entire time is that an investigation was started as a large dragnet to try and trap inexperienced people into committing perjury or an obstruction to bring down presidencies. Remember, Clinton was brought down by perjury and obstruction. He was not mm-hmm. brought down by having getting a blowjob in the Oval Office. It, yep. it was always about lying. That's what got him impeached was the perjury. And they knew that Trump is very reactionary. His people are very inexperienced. His lawyers are dumb. And that you could bring down a presidency if you started an investigation and started to make them nervous, then associates would do exactly what they did lie to the FBI, get caught up in various, th- you know, and everything that you will see out of Mueller's team from here on out, I guarantee will all be perjury charges. Yeah. It will, it will be obstruction charges. None of it will be the smoking gun. Because if really sit down and think about what, what does Russia gate? what is it about? What does collusion actually mean? What does that look like? Nobody has ever articulated that from the government, from the left, Mm-hmm. No, everybody has their own different little quiet theories. But if you watch CNN all day and you look at it with a critical mind going, what is the connection between Trump? What were they doing with Russia that was illegal or inappropriate? And you never really hear them say, this is what we think was happening. You just hear there's an, uh, there's an impropriety here. This looks really bad. Well, looking bad is not a criminal standard. It's not a reason to end a presidency. But what I think has gone on is the same mentality that shook me to the core during one of the debates when Trump said, I may not agree with the election results. I may not hand over and transfer power and just concede. Like that was a terrifying thought that this guy would just throw a tantrum and throw us into a constitutional crisis. Mm -hmm. And Hillary Clinton and all of her associates were horrified by that. And I think those people have done the exact same thing here by creating a constitutional crisis by setting a precedent that every president from here on out will have there will be some scandal quote unquote Mm -hmm. that will then be investigated and it will just be a a rolling black mark on the entire thing because remember ken Starr was started to investigate his he was hired to investigate whitewater he was not hired to investigate monica Lewinsky. These special investigations just take on a life of their own. So I really think that this is a dangerous precedent that was set and that we're going to see used over and over. It's like the impeachment thing. George Bush, it doesn't matter what W was going to do in office. The Democrats were going to try and impeach him and look for reasons to impeach him based on the fact that Republicans found a reason to impeach Clinton. And then articles were introduced against Barack Obama, and there was no reason for that. And now there's no reason to impeach Trump, but it's being introduced because he's unpopular. Well, 
tough S. <laughs> but he's only unpopular in coast cities. Right. That's it. Exactly. And, and with people who are going to be unpopular with any pre- president. You know? Right. So I pointed at myself. Yeah, right. Doing radio here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it, 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 and it's that cloud of funk because that all idea of, like, that's who Putin wanted president. Putin wanted Trump president, really. That's who he wanted, an inexperienced politician that will probably screw himself up or somebody, somebody who's so rich and so old that will, you know, could screw me over out of ways because he's got kids that are controlling businesses that could, you know, screw me over out of business right. deals. That's who I want for president. Or do I want a president that's someone whose family's been in politics for all year, all the year. Their family is so entrenched in the politics that, you know, they'll play ball to keep the ball rolling. Jeb. Sure. That would make more sense. This yeah. would be believable if Jeb won the election out of nowhere and beat everyone. I'm like, okay, maybe this is Russian hacking with Jeb. <laughs> right. This makes freaking sense. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. This makes sense. And every little piece of evidence that ever comes up, every Russian that goes and meets with the Trump inner circle gets rebuffed. Every time that uh, Facebook ads are found on Facebook, like Hillary spent like a billion dollars on Facebook trying to win our yeah. votes and she lost but a hundred thousand dollars worth of facebook ads did it like mm-hmm. there's just every time there is another breathless we got him moment in any of this like joy behar embarrassing herself uh, on the view uh, if you haven't seen the clip it's hilarious where she's like <laughs> breaking news from brian ross on abc <gasps> flynn is going to turn he's going to go after the president Whee! And then she had to apologize for it the next day and say, ah, I jumped the gun. I mean, they, there's even the Flynn plea isn't a big deal. Mm-hmm. So there and trust me, I would love to sit here and say, ah, they got him. They got Trump. He's out of office yeah. because I think what what Trump is doing is eroding for like the right conservatives were on our side when it came to limited government trying to have some level of morality Mm -hmm. like maybe their politicians didn't but your average conservative voter and libertarians agreed on a lot of stuff but the average trump voter now they're so far into propaganda land that you have to lie you have to lie to them to get them to come with you you know or figure out a way to propagandize them to really follow you. And it's a very dangerous thing. And I'm reading this book called, um, I'll have to look it up, but it, it's, it, uh, let me pull up my Kindle, but right. go ahead. Yeah. But, yeah, no, like, the, that's the other thing with this. Uh, the the Trump supporters are some of the, uh, they, a lot of them are on the Trump Kool-Aid train, on the hype train. But their reasoning is sound when they do talk about it, though, because there's so much, it's, they're used to being attacked, right. and to them, a lot of them aren't really that staunch conservatives or Republicans because, you know, to be perfectly honest, just like most people at any political political party is, they're not very well read on their party or on, on their principles. Because they're new to the politics. Right, and, politics and, in general. Yeah, yeah, and that's what, and there's so many Obama millennials mm-hmm. that are new to politics that sound ridiculous and yeah. have sounded ridiculous because they don't know either. Right, yeah. Those eight years, like, they couldn't debate. They just like, it was like, we even tried to t- talk socialism with them. It's like, they have never read the, the one, the Communist Manifesto. They have never read Das Kapital. So they don't even know what they're talking about. Right. They just know what feels good, and that's what they want. So you're trying to have these conversations with these people, and the same way with a lot of the um, conservatives. Most of them have read 1984. Uh, a lot of them has read a lot of Ayn Rand books, and, the, and right. which is also weird. I was like, how did you get through this dry crap? And <laughs> I'm going to get hate mail. For I hate Ayn Rand. <laughs> I, never, I tried. I don't care for the woman. I think she's awful. It's dry crap. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no offense. And I dated, I dated an objectivist once, and she was arguably the worst. Hey, I, I get it. I get it. I get it, and I respect and I respect those opinions. But anyway, moving on from there, then, man, uh, I hope she's not listening. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing with it is the uh, where I was going. Um, also, when it comes to libertarians, libertarians are a lot of a lot of them are uh, a lot of them are well read into their positions because b- the one benefit of being a libertarian is that you're constantly attacked on it. Right. Even an anarchist, you're freaking attacked on it. You 
Yeah, they're not do not necessarily that every libertarian is the most well read. They're the smartest and greatest. No, of course not. There's yeah. dumb libertarians who have probably never read anything, and there's also no requirement to read anything. Most uh, most people are, uh, come to libertarianism because of how they are, and someone's like, "Hey, you sound like a libertarian." Has talked to some people about it, and they've probably have never and will never touch a book on it, and you don't have to. Sure, but we're just more of. When I say that, that a lot of the conser- a lot of the um, Trump supporters, they're not more conservative; they're more just supporting Trump because they don't really understand w- um, a lot of conservative values, the ideas of the right. They're more willing to ab- embrace, to be, for lack of a better term, the right center or left center, basically center of Trump. Trump right. is center, regardless of what he says and how ridiculous it is. His actions are center. He wants yeah. to go what's popular. Center. He is. A, he is a Romney Republican. Yeah. I mean, in, yeah. in reality, and this tax bill kind of proves that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, like I would love to. Uh, I hate defending Trump. Yeah, I hate this. this is, but the truth is, is there's some defending that needs to take place if you stand for the truth. Mm-hmm. And what we're trying to do at We Are Libertarians is get to the truth. Yeah. And the truth is sometimes pro-conservative and anti-liberal, and sometimes it's anti-conservative and pro-liberal. Like, Mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. anti-Roy Moore because I think of the implications to our society and the leaders that we choose. Mm -hmm. But when I get into his politics and what he may vote for, he may vote with Rand Paul a lot. And my views and Rand Paul's views are identical. So... So, but it's like there's that lawn cutting thing. You wouldn't cut grass. No, I would grass. not cut grass. But uh, you know, and my my beef with Donald Trump is is some of it is political. But for the most part, I'm reading this book called "The Storm Before the Storm" by Mike Duncan about the the end of the Roman Republic and the lead up to Caesar and that era of how the Republic got broken. And I think it's a really interesting, really ooh, it gives you chills when you're reading it because you're like, oh shit. And um, I I forget the term, but it's like my moratorium or something or whatever. Uh, But basically it talks about the the ethical standards of the society and the government. Here are the unwritten rules of the republic that must be honored, that people just kind of follow, you know. And it's what we would call the establishment. Like here are the things that just kind of society accepted. And that society did, and society honored. And then, you know, Tiberius Gracchus comes along and destroys those things. And the Republic never reverts back to accepting those norms and those institutions and breaks it into a world that is chaos and that never is recovered and ends up in a, a Caesar-like situation. And that's my, that's my real fear with Trump, is that Trump is taking us to a place where we can't recover those norms that have been broken. Now, in some ways, as libertarians who are anti-power, we are for the breaking of those norms. And that's why libertarians sometimes sit there and go, I am for him doing that. Like, I'm not for the grab the pussy thing, but like saying I don't care to the rest of the world about NATO and some of these big treaties and the Paris Climate Agreement. I'm, I'm kind of down with that. Like, mm-hmm. I'm okay with some of those norms being broken. Yep. but And that's why he is so pleasing to the libertarian ear sometimes because he is – he's just like a reckless bull in a china shop smashing against things that we've forever argued that shouldn't be there. It shouldn't be this way. Mm-hmm. But there are some things that he's doing that are really dangerous for us as a, as a government, a republican, a society. Yeah. You know, putting people in charge of um – you know, the government departments that they want to close and shut down. You know, that's what right. that's every libertarian's wet dream. Like, man, if I was president, I would just put Ron Paul in charge of the Fed. And I would <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You know, it's stuff like that, you know. And it's and the main reason why, like, a lot of libertarians and anarchists, myself, like, we get we find ourselves just defending one, the truth. So that's why we like to celebrate when, you know, Trump gets a victory or when, because it kind of feels like it's like, ah, vindication. You know, we, it's like, we fought for that side for a little bit, but you know, like, Hey, we, that's just temporary allyship just for the truth. We still hate you and all this other bad crap that you're doing. Well, the other thing is, I was talking about this last night on discord that I almost start to believe seeing all the evidence that, uh, 
Got to go out on a limb here. All okay. right, I'm on the I'm on the limb. Get on the limb with me. It's bending very wildly because I have like, too will. much blue apron. That lately. Trump's on a 5D chess organization <laughs> for, for North Korea. All right. That he knows that it's all saber rattling. Okay? okay. That if he just keeps poking him, right, he'll keep launching this missiles, right? Right. And these missiles are not cheap. They're consuming resources, sure. time, labor, and focusing them on this, right? right? At the same time, North Korea is. A lot of people are starving in there. Mm-hmm. We know, like, from that soldier that they crossed over to South Korea, that there's, like, apparently, like, some parasites going on. People are getting parasites with us. Uh, we know they have been losing um, fishing boats. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you go and Google the, or DuckDuckGo, the uh, North Korea uh, and ghost ships, because they've been finding all kinds of ghost ships on the, uh, uh, Japan has been, and people stranded. Like going out from fishing for uh, North Korea because they've overfished that area so much because they don't really have that much meat and food in North Korea. Right. Be- because what happens in a sort of uh, communist economy, they can't plan, you know, scarce resources correctly. You know, that's the beauty of capitalism for that. So they're, it's almost like he's trying to gas them out. Yeah. Let, watch me gas you out. Yeah. I'm going to make you, I'm going to keep poking you until you make a move or you gas yourself out. It's more of a, I'm just going to block, throw up, you know, not even jab. I'm just going to rope-a-dope you. I'm yeah. going to rope-a-dope you. It, and it's not a bad theory because if he knows he's never going to press the bomb, I think you can be pretty – I'm pretty sure. Okay, now – And he doesn't have to if they launch first. I, I am obsessed with North Korea. I, in my opinion, based on everything that I've read, he's not going to fire first. Nope. He's not going to fire at America, at Japan, at South Korea, anybody, because he knows that would be the end. He's seen Gaddafi. Mm-hmm. He's seen all of this take place. He doesn't want to be Gaddafi, and he knows he would be. So if if the madman theory, which you're advocating, is accurate, it's not a bad strategy. But the problem is that do we trust? I trust Kim Jong-un not to start a war more then I trust Donald Trump. <laughs> okay? And I'm not kidding. Well, it's a good <laughs> thing that presidents can't start start wars. Only Congress can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's get back to um, what the flea, Flynn plea means. Uh, so Andrew McCarthy is a writer for National Review, and he is a former... Uh, Justice Department person, Attorney General, I think, uh, and he wrote an article that basically kind of outlines what the Flynn stuff, what happened with the Flynn stuff. Uh, it's called "What the Flynn Plea Means," December first, twenty seventeen, by Andrew C. McCarthy. Uh, former Trump Administration National Security Advisor Michael Flynn is expected to plead guilty today to lying to the FBI regarding his conversations with Russia's Russia's ambassador to the U.S. Flynn, who is reportedly cooperating with the investigation, pled guilty in federal district court to a one-count criminal information, which is filed by a prosecutor in cases when a defendant waives his right to be indicted by a grand jury. Mueller has charged Flynn with falsely telling FBI agents that he did not ask the ambassador to refrain from escalating the situation in response to the sanctions. Being questioned by the agents on January 24, 2017, Flynn also lied when he claimed he could not recall a subsequent conversation with Kislyak in which the ambassador told Flynn that the Putin regime had chosen to moderate its response to those sanctions as a result of Flynn's request. So essentially what happened is uh, Hillary lost, and Hillary was much more of a hardliner on Russia than Trump, and so was Obama. Uh, you remember the little reset button that Hillary took to uh, Lavrov at one point saying <laughs> we're going to have a reset of the relations and that was cringe. Then you had the some Ukrainian actions, and basically Trump was or Obama was being petty, and threatened some sanctions, and I think filed some sanctions against Russia. Mm-hmm. And basically, what Flynn did is reach out to Kislyak, the ambassador to, of Russia to the United States, saying, "Listen, we know Obama's doing this. Don't worry." It's not going to be enforced under the new administration in the same way. We're good. So don't react to this, please. Don't cause us problems. Don't, cannot imagine in the history of the presidency that a national security advisor didn't have that same conversation at some point 
with another per you know like it's completely normal that that took place right okay and you remember Obama on the hot mic with uh, Medved saying, you know, after the election, I'm going to have some more flexibility. Okay, I will relate it to Putin. You know, I mean, this is, these are the sorts of quiet things that you don't hear about because they're secret. Yeah. Okay, the, the puzzling thing is why did he lie about any of this? Flynn did nothing wrong in having this conversation. Why lie? That's the part that nobody can figure out. It's it makes no sense that he lied. So why did he lie? Nobody knows that. But what he did wasn't any. It, it, they're saying the Logan Act, but here the Logan Act has never been enforced. It was passed in I think Washington's administration, and basically it says a private citizen can't interfere in government affairs with foreign in foreign governments. Okay, well then what's Davos? Yeah. <laughs> like what is you know the Aspen Institute? Like, that's all it's, – it's just a silly law that is from – I want to talk about outdated laws that nobody enforces. This is one of those. It, it, he didn't violate the Logan Act because he was the incoming – he didn't have an official position in the government, but he did. You know, so he had security clearances, to had conversations with other officials. So the problem was that he lied about it. Yeah. Makes you wonder if YouTube ever is going to get taken now because, like, some troll makes some video and gets us into a war. <laughs> <laughs> or let's say he tweets something yeah. at 6, 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. well, gets into a nuclear war. Yep, tw well, then t Twitter, a civilian organization. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, so Flynn basically asked the ambassador to delay or defeat a vote on a pending U.N. resolution. Uh, so he, Flynn denied that he made any of these requests, had these conversations. Obviously, it was wrong to Flynn, for Flynn to give the informant fal the, them false information. He could, after all, have simply res refused to speak with the agents in the first place. That said, as I argued early this year, it remains unclear why the Obama Justice Department chose to investigate Flynn. There was nothing wrong with the incoming National Security Advisors meeting, having meetings with foreign counterparts or discussing such matters with the sanctions in those meetings. Plus, if the FBI had FISA recordings of Flynn's conversations with Kislyak, there was no need to ask Flynn what the conversations entailed. Flynn, an early backer of Donald Trump and a fierce critic of Obama's national security policies, was generally despised by Obama administration officials. Hence, there has always been cynical suspicion that the decision to interview him was driven by the expectation that he would provide the FBI with an account inconsistent with the recorded conversation, i.e., that Flynn was being set up for prosecution on a process crime. While initial reporting is portraying Flynn's guilty plea as a major breakthrough in Mueller's investigation of potential Trump campaign collusion with the Russia to end regime, I suspect the opposite is true. While initial reporting is portraying the guilty plea as a major breakthrough, uh, I suspect that I said that twice. Speculation that Fr Flynn is now cooperating in Mueller's investigation stirred in recent days because he had point out, pulled out of a defense joint agreement. As an ethical matter, it is inappropriate for an attorney whose client is cooperating with the government or having negotiations to continue strategizing with and having quasi-privileged communications with other subjects of the investigation. Makes total sense. Nevertheless, as I explained with Papadopoulos, when a prosecutor has a, co a cooperator who was an accomplice to a major criminal scheme, the cooperator is made to plead guilty to the scheme. This is critical because it proves the existence of the scheme. In his guilty plea all allocution, uh, the accomplice explains the scheme and the actions taken by himself and his co-conspirators. This isn't happening in Flynn's situation, and it didn't happen with Papadopoulos. Basically, McCarthy goes on to lay out that if, if you're Mueller and you're the team, you go for the biggest charge you can. Mm -hmm. And you don't... All of the reports out there saying that he must have uh, gotten off on a lesser charge because he's cooperating... It's just hopeful thinking. It's yeah. not actually how the law or these investigations work. The way that it actually works is that they want the biggest slam dunk they can get you on, which is an espionage charge. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that they didn't charge him with that means they didn't find that. Right. Yeah. It's like those, they like to believe it's like those TV court dramas. It's like, we'll let you plead down to this lesser charge if you help us go after the kingpin. Right. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Right. No, you take this highest charge that we can get you on, we'll just get you, you know, lease on sentencing, and that's about all you're going to get. Yeah, and... And if that, if freaking that, 
You know, a lot of them just go like, you know, you're, you're going to get freaking everything. We'll just, you know, go, you know, you'll get something else. That's it. Or they not give you anything because they either don't, if, if they don't need you, especially if they don't need you. Yeah. They just want, they just want the trial to go faster. So you, you see that if, Never there, the plea deal. if there was a scheme, he would have, he would have admitted to the scheme based on the way that federal prosecutors actually work. Now, one of the bad impulses of Trump is that he is kind of a tyrannical dictator type. Uh, if you watch anything about Saddam Hussein, Kim Jong-un, anything about these tyrants, he fits the profile of a tyrant, an authoritarian, completely. Like, it's scary. Uh, we just have a very robust, healthy system of government so we can survive it. <laughs> you actually believe that. All right, I do. <laughs> Uh, I, I, like, I think we've, uh, listen, despite the banana politics of Democrats trying to set up national security advisors for collusion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I still believe we'll, we'll make it. Oh, no, I, I know we'll make it. I just know, like, if you wanted to, there's nothing really stopping it. Right. It, there's nothing. The, nothing. Bub, the Bubba effect is real. Okay. Yeah. It's something that, that Glenn Beck has talked about forever. What, what you have, and you already have this on the border right now, there are guys who are, you know, part of the uh, 3%, and the, this group, basically 3% Americans, believe, you know, say 3% of Americans overturned the government in the revolution, mm -hmm. and we're the 3% that will overthrow this government, and they're patrolling the border because they don't believe that the government is doing to, enough to protect the border. Mm -hmm. And so what you have is, you know, Black Friday, was it 250,000 uh Gun yeah, checks, gun, yeah, yeah yes. gun checks. Yeah. I think it was it was in the hundreds of thousands. It was, yeah, it crazy. was, it was huge, and that's probably just what they reported today. It's probably was higher than that, and there's probably even more, more. Uh, uh, FA, I think I was going to say FA, FFL, right? <laughs> FFL dealers on freaking Saturday and, and and Monday, yeah, getting like guns as they get shipped to them. Like, okay, that's probably what they spent their entire Monday going. Okay, check, act, da, 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 yeah. just going through all these people's checks. So you have you have record high gun sales, which hey, we're not cool. Uh, Fifteen hundred and fifty thousand gun checks. Thank you, Jeff Hibbert. Uh, essentially, you, this massive amount of gun checks. What what I think we're really headed for is Trump has unleashed the Bubba effect, and you're going to have people who are going to say we can't trust the government in any capacity, let alone for our security. We can't trust them in any way so we need to arm ourselves something happens we start to re rebuild the militia movement again and then something happens like a ruby ridge only people are way more connected because of social media and way more armed and then we have we have uh, what you may call fun times what I may call I'm going to Harry's house <laughs> won't be there but <laughs> so it's funny you think I'll still be there. That's, I appreciate that. I appreciate well, I know you'll probably may have left at least a bullet for me. I'll leave a high point. All right, cool. I'll leave a high point for you. So essentially, that's where I think we're heading. But uh, the Trump White House, so uh, the authoritarian impulses of this government are, are scary. And The Intercept put out a story today called Trump White House Weighing Plans for Private Spies to Counter Deep State Enemies. Let that sink in. Uh, basically, the Trump administration is considering a set of proposals developed by Blackwater founder Eric Prince and retired and a retired CIA officer with assistance from Oliver North, a key figure in the Iran-Contra scandal, to provide CIA Director Mike Pompeo and the White House with a global private spy network that would circumvent official U.S. intelligence agencies, according to several current and former U.S. intelligence officials and with others familiar with the proposals. The sources say the plans have been pitched to the White House as a means of countering deep state enemies in the intelligence community seeking to undermine Donald Trump's presidency. Woo! Uh, yeah. Now, Roger Stone, yes, that Roger Stone, commented on my Facebook post on this. As I said, Oliver Stone and, and Blackwater want to form a private... Contra CIA accountable only to Donald Trump, the president. What could possibly go wrong? And Roger left a cryptic comment that said, Liddy and Hunt. That's what, essentially, I think, saying that's what could go wrong. Liddy or Hunt, basically saying this isn't anything to worry about. It, it's only a creep situation. Mm -hmm. 
and he would know. He was on C Creep, the committee to reelect the president. Uh, this is how I'm interpreting what he says, because Roger knows Eric Prince and Donald Trump and, and Oliver North, and I don't, and, and I'm sure Mike Pompeo. Um, so at the very best, mm -hmm. <laughs> this plan is to reestablish the committee to reelect the president, which dispatched the plumbers to fix things in the government, and one of the things that they fixed were the, the Democratic headquarters at the Watergate, which led to the stepping the, the impeachment, uh, the impending impeachment and resignation of Richard Nixon. So, at the very worst, we have an unaccountable private army that only is controlled by the president, which the SS to me didn't seem like a thing that worked out for people like Harry. For me, I'd be good, because look at this haircut. Like, I'd be fine, but... They wouldn't take you. They don't take degenerates. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. I've seen your internet search. Listen. I've seen your waifu, and she's crap. Um, I don't know what a waifu is. How dare a, you. I've seen his waifu. This is... Um, uh, oh, and but, the person that would be running it would be De Betsy DeVos's brother. Yeah. Uh, I think um, every... Um, you know, like... He's the person on my side of the aisle. Their first response was, "Is that kind of what the like the other agencies are are doing? That it go to the federal government, like get their money through Congress and take order from the the head of the executive branch? Is right. that kind of what they're doing? You know? Oh no, you need another one. This this is to me. It just seems like making departments for more departments' sake. And the the real creep on it that I have is the mission creep or the scope creep of this department. As it like if it does get elected." watching this thing grow and grow and get bigger because like if you think Donald Trump is bad wait till President Zuckerberg okay <laughs> right. when President Zuckerberg gets up control of this department and plus Facebook because Zuckerberg won't need a subpoena or warrant to check fa Facebook servers because he owns them right he just can be like no here's an NSA here's my password go in go into the server get what you need out of it find my political enemies so, yeah, you you got to go read the story, but it, I, I saw a lot of people on our Facebook page today saying, well, the deep state needs to be countered, and a private, a private solution would be good. Uh, well, this isn't a private solution. This is a, a paramilitary accountable only to the president of the United States. That's a huge problem. That's how you get a coup. That's how you get a coup. Or not coup. <laughs> right. Or, and the other thing is, like, I think the way to counteract the deep state is to remove the government's power. Right. Take out agencies, destroy agencies, just get rid of them. Right. Uh, defund things, get rid of the power of the federal government. You do You do kind of what uh, Trump is doing, which is de-staffing. I mean, he's right. just not yeah. filling positions, mm -hmm. uh, which is yeah. good We're, for us, bad for the swamp. Right, yeah. You drain the swamp that way, you remove fangs this way on, out of the beast. You know, you can basically turn it into a paper tiger. It can't do anything. Because the federal government's only powerful because it has the bad power, it has guns, it's got all this different stuff. But if you start removing all that stuff, brick by brick, the deep state doesn't have its power. It's like, why? You don't have any power. I've got yeah. money. You don't have power. Exactly. Why, why am I scared of you? So, yeah, the, the way to fight the deep state is not by creating a second deep state that then yeah. is, you know, basically uh, they wanted to, he wants to reinstitute rendition. Um, Oliver North, which actually, Harry, that Iwo Jima photo on the back over there, yeah. autographed by Oliver North oh, nice. from at CPAC 2003, back when I was a little uh, neocon. Um, I met him. He was a very nice, a very nice man. Uh, and he basically was helping run weapons to the Contras. And it just look into Oliver North, and he was part of the problem with the, with the Reagan CIA. Uh, you have... Eric Prince and Blackwater. Google Eric Prince and Blackwater and see the problems with Blackwater. Uh, Abu Ghraib may come to mind. Uh, I don't think they were involved in Abu Ghraib, but they had a s similar situations. And essentially, you have the Trump administration and the potential of Tom Cotton, U.S. Senator Tom Cotton. Uh, Rex Tillerson may leave the State Department as Secretary of State. Pompeo, who is head of the CIA, would move into the Secretary of State position. Tom Cotton would then move into the CIA director's position. Tom Cotton, without a doubt, is one of the most anti-libertarian senators there is. He's, we've in the past called him the worst United States senator. 
John McCain has recaptured that title. Uh, he's he's like Peter King, only worse. Uh, Tom Cotton is would be an absolute disaster at the CIA. Uh, he defends torture to the hilt. Pompeo believes in torture, and giving so does so does President Trump. So giving them the ability to torture people and create those black sites that that were illegal against every uh, peace treaty that we've ever signed, uh, against UN regulations, against the United States regulations of, of warfare. Like, these are things that we agreed during the Obama administration, like, we shouldn't have done that during the Bush administration. And so something called HIG, the High Intelligence... Uh, I just read it in Politico today, but basically this group that Obama founded from all these different agencies and high... Uh, basically interviewing suspects essentially you know they they interviewed the Sarnaev Sarnaev brother after the Boston bombing these guys basically study the best techniques on how to play the mind game to get information out of suspects without torturing because torture has been shown not to work not only is it immoral and illegal and unethical it doesn't work Mm -hmm. they tell you what you want to hear so you'll stop uh, but the Trump administration has started to wither that HIG group and now wants to entertain the idea of building, uh, building a secret CIA, the, the second, <laughs> a second clandestine group that would basically be charged with going into places where the CIA is not allowed to go, like North Korea, and then go and torture people and then build new black sites. It just It's a recipe for disaster. There's nothing about this article in The Intercept that is a good idea. Nothing. And the people running it are bad dudes. And even if Roger Stone, if I'm reading Roger right in what he said, the best case scenario is G. Gordon Liddy and Hunt and breaking into doing political espionage within the United States, like that's not good either. So I, I, I don't know. I, we'll, this is something we'll be watching and reading more into and giving you more information about because it's a really scary prop. It's a really scary proposal. Um, just one thing that I wanted to bring to your attention: uh, the Inc. Inc.com, Inc.com. Meghan Markle may become a princess by marrying Prince Harry, but the IRS will still want its share of the royal jewels. Now, Harry, you made a comment about me leaving the U.S. and the government wanting its cut, mm-hmm. and this basically tells you exactly. What, basically says you were right Mm -hmm. um you can't leave yeah so it's a crazy kind of rule for nor and for normal people it wreaks havoc many banks want nothing to do with american customers which can make it difficult to live overseas foreign financial institutions understandably aren't keen on letting the u.s government nose around their records the easiest thing to do is keep americans out markle who is an american she was in the show suits She's now engaged to Prince Harry, mm-hmm. and they will get married next year. She's a U.S. citizen, and she is subject to the Foreign Account Tax Compliant Act. And that means she must report any foreign bank accounts to the IRS every year and have, uh, and if they have more than $10,000. And if Markle and the Prince have any sort of joint bank account, the IRS gets to snoop around his bank account, which is connected to the royal family. So I'm guessing they will have separate bank accounts. Um, yeah, so Marco will also be required to pay U.S. taxes on any money she receives in the U.K., uh, and the IRS would have access to any of that. U.S. and the Eritrea are the only countries in the world that tax, ba- that tax based on citizenship rather than residency. So, again, uh, I will put all these links in the show notes at WeAreLibertarians.com. I'm going to be better about that. And they won't let her renounce her citizenship. No, that's another part, yeah. If they do it because she's doing it for those tax reasons. Yeah. <laughs> right. If, if you say, I'm, I just don't want to pay your taxes, they won't, rele- they won't release you. Yeah, they won't. Nope. 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 All right. I did like some... Yeah, go ahead and read the article because there's some funny jokes in that article, too. I think the... I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we post, it is, there's some funny jokes in that one. It's We posted it up at the Facebook, and like I said, I'm going to do better at linking all these stories up at uh, wearelibertarians.com. Yeah, it's almost like we make a board, and we like tack all like our links to it. It makes it easy for you. Yeah, the Trello will help me do that. Uh, you will. The Supreme Court is hearing the gay Nazi bake caking, uh, cake baking thing tomorrow. Uh, and Justice Kennedy, they have already heard, actually. They heard it today. And the New York Times reported, reports justice is sharply divided in the wedding cake case. So here's, here's essentially what happened. 
Charlie Craig and David Mullins live in Colorado, and one of their mothers flew into town, and it was the only day that they were going to get to do wedding stuff, and so they decided to go out and look for a cake. And they went to uh, the shop of Jack Phillips, which is, can you look at what it's called? It should say it right here, but Jack Phillips shop, and they basically, he said, no, I won't make you a cake. Now, he said that, uh, I, I just don't believe in creating that message. Uh, starts with an M. Masterpiece Cakes. Yep, that's it. Masterpiece. Masterpiece Cakes. Peace, uh, not Pete's. Masterpiece. Thank you. Uh, the New York Times podcast on December 5th did a really good interview with Jack Phillips about this case and about his beliefs. Uh, that was actually really fair to him. So, and they, they've done uh, an interview with a couple, too, in the past. So, fair coverage from the New York Times. And what Jack Phillips basically is saying is it's not a religious test. It's a free speech test. What he is arguing is that I'm an artist, and I create cakes. I create art, and it, this is freedom of expression. I don't believe in expressing their message. So, therefore, I don't have to do this. He doesn't make divorce party cakes. He doesn't do other cakes. So Charlie Craig and David Mullins were offended by this. They went to the car. They cried. They had very upset, hurt feelings over this. As I mean, I, I guess I could see that. You go in and you're denied service because of a part of your identity. I think anybody would take that hard, mm -hmm. uh, would take that in, in a way that is, is hurtful. And they filed with uh, the Colorado Human Rights Commission basically saying he's discriminating against us. And Colorado is one of those states where gay discrimination is protected against in the Human Rights Code in Colorado. And this commission went to his store and said, hey, bro, you can't do that. And he said, uh, it's my right to. And now it's being heard by the Supreme Court, and he's taking the free speech uh, argument, saying that anybody who performs at a wedding is performing, is performing in an artistic sense. And I could see that because nobody you, you can argue and George will argue that this is a product. You're buying a cake. And that was refuted in the National Review by David French yesterday, December 4th. George will is wrong about Masterpiece Cake Shop. <laughs> I guess I could have looked here. And he basically goes on to say, like, who goes to a wedding and buys a cake based on taste? You have the testing, but you're buying it because it's art. You are buying it for the way that it looks. Correct. Yeah. You know, and if, if you don't, you go to Costco and get a sheet cake. You know, now granted, exactly. some people do. They do get the get that small little cake for themselves that tastes good. Yeah, the artist, and they eat that in the wedding party, and they get sheet cake. <laughs> that, yeah, I know. I've seen people do that. I've seen people like get out the sheet cakes and leave their wedding cake intact, and I'm just like, what are you doing with all that cake? Some of it's foam. When they do that, really it's foam on icing. Oh. I've worked hundreds and hundreds of weddings. I've seen all kinds of weird things where they've, you know, they literally, it's icing over foam because they bought a little bit of cake there to cut. Interesting. And they'll cut there. That's so a great idea. So it looks like a beautiful, massive cake, but it's really foam. Right. Okay. And then they take it in the back and they just bought a bunch of sheet cake from um, Costco and they have the catering staff just cut it up, plate it up, send it back out. No one knows the diff. Huh. So the Supreme Court, Justice Kennedy is going to be the swing vote on this. And Justice Kennedy has always been someone that has ruled in favor of gay rights. And he's the, he's the swing vote that decided the gay rights, you know, Supreme Court landmark case. Uh, I don't know what it was called, but uh, he's also somebody that has always carved out an exception for dissenters. So all eyes were on Justice Kennedy today, and this is what Adam Liptak in the New York Times wrote. Justice Kennedy, who almost certainly holds the crucial vote in the case of the Colorado baker who refused to bake a wedding cake for gay couples, sent sharply contradictory messages when it was argued Tuesday at the Supreme Court. He asked a lawyer for the Trump administration whether the baker, Jack Phillips, could put a sign in his window saying, we don't bake cakes for gay weddings. The lawyer, Noel J. Francisco, said yes, so long as the cakes were custom made. Justice Kennedy looked troubled and said the administration's position was an affront to the dignity of gay couples. Later, though, Justice Kennedy said that a state civil rights commission that had ruled against the baker had neither been tolerant nor respectful of Mr. Phillips' religious beliefs. 
the case, which puts the claim of the religious freedom against the fight for gay rights, has attracted extraordinary public attention and around 100 friend of the court briefs, including Cato, Reason, and the I think the Independent uh, Institute. I'm pretty sure I have that wrong. <laughs> uh, so, lasted 90 minutes. There are a lot of great podcasts that if you're interested in this, you can actually download the oral arguments and hear those today. Uh, I did not listen, but just to let you know. And uh, Sonia Sotomayor appeared unpersuaded. When have we ever given protection to a food? Justice Breyer, who's on the left, said the questions served a purpose. Where's the line? That is, where, what is everybody is trying to get at? Um, so, you know, you can look into this a little bit more if you're, you're more interested. We may talk about this once the ruling comes out. But this is very simple for libertarians. This is a very simple answer. You have the right to do whatever you want to do with your property. If Harry is black and I am white, Harry is my friend. I love having him come and be a part of my podcast. His race never enters into my thinking. We're buddies. He, I see him as a human being. He sees me as a human being. But if I were a racist and I said to Harry right now, Harry, you are a black. I do not like blacks in my home. Get out. Harry, what would your reaction be? Well, first of all, I'm uh, the NAACP. <laughs> we're getting... <laughs> Get everyone down here right now. Right. You need to give me access. I need full, complete access. This is a civil rights violation. <laughs> no, yeah, it, you would just, just generally just leave. You know, so you, like you just try to get out. You know, you would. I know you. Mm -hmm. Let me let me white explain for you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> great. Rick white Irvine explain. has already quoted me. It's on the internet. I do not like blacks in my home. Get out. That is going to be a drop used against me ten years if I ever run for office. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, out of context, quote, this is why I can't run, ever run for office. But th the fact remains... Out of context, Wall. ...that if, if I hold an opinion that is morally abhorrent, like blacks are lesser than whites, I, I, I shouldn't be punished legally for that. I, I shouldn't be forced to do anything with my property that I don't want to do. And here's why. Because the most egregious examples of free speech, of property rights, always come, the erosion begins with the most egregious examples, the most hateful of examples. The exceptions in the law are always carved out at the, mo at the worst examples. And that's what Defending the Undefendable by Walter Block is about. Here are why prostitutes are good. You know, and basically goes through all the undefendable positions of the people who are the quote unquote dregs of society. I'll defend prostitutes, uh, recreational cocaine use. I have no problem defending these people. Right. Sex work is work. Exactly. Sex work right. is work. So get over it. If you, you know, sex work is work. Is is racism? Is uh, homophobia? Is Islamophobia? Is bigotry of any kind morally right? No. It is absolutely incomprehensible and ridiculous to think that Harry is less than me in terms of biology because of the difference of our race. He has more melanin than me. That's it. Like, it's just a dumb position. Right. And so those people are just knuckle-dragging idiots. Mm -hmm. And they're dumb people in our society, and racists will always exist. Mm -hmm. There will always be bigots in our society. And if you want to live in a free society, that's the cost. You have to deal with some dumb people. And you, you cannot legislate away bigotry because you can't legislate people's thoughts. You can't legislate people's emotions. You can't legislate people's memories. You can't legislate their dumb ideas. Like, it, it just doesn't exist. That ability is not part of the government capacity. And likewise, you can't protect people's feelings. That's not a value. That's not a standard of law. If your feelings are hurt, I'm sorry, that sucks. But that is not an excuse for me to use the force of government to ruin this guy's business. He's lost 40% of his business. Is it, is it shitty that those people, that, that uh, the, the two gay men and their mother 
cried in the car for a half an hour after this inter- encounter, yes, that sucks. Mm-hmm. And I feel bad for them on yeah. a human level. And to have part of their identity dismissed in that way is really shitty. Mm-hmm. But you know what you do? You go to a different cake maker. Yeah. You don't well, You don't use the force of government to steal 40% of his business because he hurt your feelings one day. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just not how... That's not how life works. Yeah. Which, like, you know what? He, he, and the thing is, he might he does have a case. He has a freaking case. It's the point of the fact that he stopped doing wedding cakes. Right. He can literally just backpedal like, you know what? I just stopped doing wedding cakes yeah. on that day. He had to fire employees. He said, I'm no longer making cakes. I'm, I'm Wedding cakes. Wedding cakes. Wedding cakes. He, you can't get anything but a wedding cake. Right. And so he, they tried to force his employees, which are his family, to take sensitivity training. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, this is ridiculous. So, And his argument is that they've not been very sensitive to my religious beliefs. Like, right. they, they, I have, a, I have an opinion of them. He's like, I don't hate them in any way, shape, or form. I just didn't want to use my art to create a message that I didn't agree with. Right, and he was willing to serve them anything. Right. If they just wanted a regular basic cake, a cookie, right. uh, he just didn't want to do a wedding. They didn't want to do a gay wedding ceremony. Right. You know? And it wasn't discriminatory against gays. He says, I don't do divorce parties. I don't do, I don't do a lot of, I don't do pornography. Mm-hmm. I don't do you know, I, there's a lot of things that I don't do because I don't agree in creating that message. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. Because to, to, him making those cakes is art. It's art. And a lot of the stuff that chefs do in the kitchen, it is freaking art. And it and some of that art tastes good. Right. Yeah. I spent a lot of time in the kitchen watching people watching chefs make some brilliant food. Right. And that's another reason I always had an issue with like a fifteen dollar now for you know gas station or not gas station work workers, but for like you know minimum wage. Those stupid grill people making hamburgers. Like most line cooks, barely make fifteen dollars. Or sous chefs barely make sixteen, eighteen dollars an hour. You want fifteen yeah. for that crappy hamburger? But anyways, back to the you know the catering <laughs> aspect of it. You know, watching these guys make brilliant pieces of art and oh man, God, that's so good. Uh, if you guys, it, it, one thing you do in your twenties is to get a part time job at a catering company, work front of house or back of house. Just work. To, work the catering you can just work saturday freaking night you get, you get you will get so much delicious food and learn some kitchen and learn kitchen work and how to work in a kitchen how to cook food it's you know really brilliant, brilliant idea um but the the thing is like a lot of people also equate this whole artic, uh, article to the uh the sit-in movement the civil rights movement this is just the same thing of like companies um not allowing blacks in there or just like the thing is well that was a lot of bread from from government policy yeah a lot of that was government policy and laws now granted some companies did put in these policies these franchises did put in before words that was a policy of it right but it was also helped to go the reason people even took that freaking policy or they even thought about putting that policy on the book because it was also a law. Because a Bull Connor was there with German Shepherds to protect that company. Mm-hmm. For, for, I mean, it was systemic racism. Right. You know, and, like, there are certain parts of the Black Lives Matter movement that I agree with in terms of criminal justice reform needs to take place, that the drug war disproportionately affects the black community, mm-hmm. that police agencies have become paramilitary. Uh, the Rise of the Warrior Cop by Radley Balco outlines that. There are certain parts of that that I agree with, yep. but at the same time, we don't have many Bull Connors. Like, there there are, like, if you're a gay person in this country, you, just in our lifetime, think about the, the growth of acceptance that we had. Especially a gay white man. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, like, it, it just, it's, it's amazing how society has transformed, and there are, there are, it's it's really a great thing to see people get to live their life as they see fit. Mm-hmm. Like, is the government forcing someone to do something? That should be the standard. And in this case, the government is not forcing the couple to buy his cake. That's the difference. And in this case, he's being forced to provide a product he doesn't want to provide. Yep. And this is a this is a private property issue Mm -hmm. as well as a free speech issue and they don't think that they could win on that which is sad because we are in a society which has had the notion of private property eroded to the point that 
we're just okay with paying property taxes. We're renting from the government. Like, the entire point of the Magna Carta is that an individual can own a piece of land, and that's what sparked the liberty revolution in humanity. Mm -hmm. You know, and we cannot lose the notion of private property and the castle doctrine that the, the, the piece of loan that land that you own is yours, that the business that you have built is yours, and it isn't subject to all these little regulations. Like, it, I'm sorry, I feel bad for the couple, but... I lost the sympathy when they decided to use the force of state to make this guy do something next time. Like, mm -hmm. you're going to eat that cake? <laughs> yeah. Would you eat a cake that you, like... That's the other thing. He also could have priced them out of it. Right. This cake, $100,000. Right. You know, it, it just, it's... Sure, I'll do your wedding, $100,000. I do not deliver. I will be done on Tuesday. You will pick it up on a Wednesday. Our wedding Saturday. I will be done on Tuesday. You right. will pick it up on Wednesday. Tough shit. So it, it is, it's just a really important subject. Like, and Gary Johnson was like, well, we just can't do blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, yeah. man. And he was honest with these guys. Yeah. He was freaking honest with them. I'm not doing this for X reason. Yeah. He could have said, no. No, yeah. I'm not doing it. Why? I'm busy. And it's sad they didn't respect him. I mean, it, it's, it's. Right. Respect that because he could have looked at him and I like, I'm busy that day. I'm full on cakes. Right. Or he could have said something like. You effing queers. You know, it wasn't even hateful. Get out of my shop, you. I, I, they even said, you know, he wasn't, di like, he disrespected us and our person, but he well, didn't yell at us and call us, you know, names. Like, right. it, yeah. It, and with them, there's, they're probably the soup du jour around their neighborhood. They get, they probably go to all kinds of different parties. They, they're probably, they get to, they go to fundraisers and stuff like that because they are, you know. They're now celebrities. Yeah. yeah. Celebrities. Especially in the gay community there. And in some of these cases, you have, these are quote unquote test cases where an activist couple goes in, tries to target this happened with uh, Mystery Pizza up in northern Indiana, mm -hmm. uh, where they basically were known uh, Christian business owners, and the TV reporter went there to ask them if they'd ever make a pizza for a gay wedding, and they said no, of course, and then HuffPo picked it up and it was off to the races, and then they got a million dollars from Glenn Beck's audience and but their their business and their lives were never really the same. And it's one of those things where everybody's outraged about this these people for like a week and then the world goes away and everything sucks for these people, you know. And it's the same with Trayvon Martin's family and all these different families that are just in life in just the spotlight. It really is terrible what, what happens to all these families that kind of ride this, this public shaming wave. Um, you know, as you heard in the Washington Post article earlier, she's like, I didn't, I just didn't want to bring this out because I just didn't want to go through that again. Like, I didn't want to get death threats from conservatives again. Mm -hmm. You know, but then he called me a liar and my integrity was at stake. So I called, you know. Yeah. So more on that, I don't, I don't know if I felt like I did a good job defending our position on that. Did I do okay? I think it was okay because that's just what the position is. Like, that's the weird position. Like, it's, you see, you saw both sides. And what right. you and the libertarian response is, I'm with you up until you use the force of state. Sure. The force of putting a gun to this man's head to bake a cake is wrong. Right. Yeah, I can understand. Like if later it just went home, you know, maybe started a hashtag, got online and try to talk to these people, possibly protest, property boycotted, you know, just using private means doing yeah. that, or just trying to talk to the guy and work with the guy. That's that's a little more that's more of you but in your response you would been totally on those guys aside yeah but once they use that force of the gun the gun of the state when anyone says like there's ought to be a law that gun that comes out when there's ought to be a law that comes down and forces you to do anything yeah and bef in before anyone goes well it's just going to be a fine and stuff like that what if you don't choose to pay the fine right then you're going to get a gun will come out and try to drag you and put you in a cage exactly but yeah no I there was a place called Just Cookies that was in the city market across the street from where I worked when I worked for the Libertarian Party. And uh, they went through this where they refused to make some pride cookies for the IUPUI Gay Student Union. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just became a whole hot topic yep. nationally. And I went I went and I actually, because uh, they had some fire-ass butterscotch cookies, to be honest with you. Yeah. And uh, so I was in the market one day, and I wanted to ask them how business, it was about a year later. And I just said, how's business been since that happened? And they said, well, it's gone down. Uh, we, we've lost a lot of customers. I'd say it's gone down, I think she said somewhere around 25%. She said it's, it's 
for for every liberal customer that we lost, we you know gained some conservative customers. Uh, but it's not the loss of business; it's the introduction of being a political football that we didn't want. It's that we didn't want people to misinterpret what we believe. We didn't want uh, people to think that we had some sort of political position on it. They took the position that he's taking. She said, you know, I just don't, it's not a cause I believe in. It's just not something I'd really like to, uh, I just didn't want to get involved in politics. Mm -hmm. And by not getting involved in politics, she got involved in politics, and it cost her 25% of her business and made her a political football for the left and the right. And she's like, I just didn't want any of that. Yeah. And her, and, and that all in all, that whole stunt there hurt Market District. Right. You know? Absolutely. You know, because granted, it's, it's a relief and bounce back. It's not even as yeah. popular as it was back then. Yeah, the city market. So It was uh, awesome back then. Final story. U.S. Senate Bill S. This is a United States Senate Bill. This is from <laughs> Bitcoin. I'm only bringing this up, even though we're way over time, because I want uh, Harry's thoughts on this. U.S. Senate Bill S-1241 to criminalize concealed ownership of Bitcoin. The U.S. Senate Committee of the Judiciary held a hearing in regard to 1241. Uh, whoops, sorry. Uh, Bill 1241 would amend the definition of financial institution in the U.S. Code. An issuer, redeemer, or cashier of prepaid access devices, digital currency or any digital exchanger or tumbler currency. Currently, the definition of financial institute in institution includes banks, trust companies, credit unions, and currency exchanges. Uh, this was introduced by Diane Feinstein. She essentially, she's the ranking member of the Judiciary Committee. Judiciary! The bill criminalizes intentionally concealing ownership or control of a bank account. Although during the hearing, no further clarifications were given as to the effects this would have on the cryptocurrency community, based on the amendment definition financial institution, it seems clear enough that the bill would criminalize those who intentionally conceal ownership uh, uh, con or control of a digital con currency account. So the bill is proposing to make criminals out of anyone intentionally concealing ownership of digital currency, and Harry, one of the benefits of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is that you are anonymous, correct? Incorrect. Uh, really? You're okay. not anonymous when using Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash or most cryptocurrencies. Yes, that's how I said it. You are not anonymous. You are technically pseudo-anonymous because once you, it, it, um, I got to put it, it all depends on your object. If you put your wallet on your phone, well, your phone is tied to you. Right. That's how they know. All right, you're not anonymous, right? But if you put a Bitcoin on, let's say... A, a if you if you go through the dark android project and using a dark android device you've got it on that then you know okay as long as you don't tie it to you buy it through you or tie something to you it's kind of anonymous you don't have to tie it to you but it's about as anonymous as a twitter handle so the moment you direct it towards you at any all at any or anything then people know it's you just like a tw like an anonymous twitter handle but if you want a, a, a true a true anonymous cryptocurrency or something like Zencash or Monero or what's it, is it Z, Zcash? Anyways, those cryptocurrencies that use zero knowledge proofs. Mm -hmm. So they still have the ledger that everything like a Bitcoin does, but the everything is basically once once you send it out, no one knows who you sent it out to. Okay. It just uh, lost, gone in the ether. But the same thing it but and it's but the thing, same thing is, with the, with the Zencash or Monero or Zcash wallet, if you point it towards you and let people know you have this, then it's not that anonymous, right? You know, that's that's the the anonymous nature of it, uh, because you can have you can because you can create as many Bitcoin wallets you you want, right? But if you tie one to you, it's not anonymous. So if you tie a Bitcoin wallet to you, you take cash to your bank or credit union, and you have that money transfer to you that bitcoin wallet well granted that's good enough for the irs you own that yeah okay um or at least they want to know who you sent it to hmm. uh then if you use something like coinbase and use your credit card hey they know it's you yeah so i uh i did a show the league of liberty episode three with mark claire of lions of liberty johnny mm -hmm. rocket of johnny rocket launchpad and roger paxton of the lava flow we had a great conversation you mentioned roger last huh uh, i did uh because roger basically taught Listen, you all know I know everything about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, but I wanted to have Roger explain it to me like I'm a dummy for your sake, okay? So 
Roger basically explained to me what Bitcoin was and like all about cryptocurrency on this uh, episode of the League of Liberty, which you can access if you are a Patreon subscriber, $5 more a month. And Roger basically teaches me how to get into the, the crypto game. And I ended up finding some really cool apps. And I, I basically have tens and tens of dollars invested in the market now. Um, <laughs> I am like Gordon Gecko. Mm -hmm. I am uh, slicking back my hair. Uh, oh, I got a message from AOL Instant Messenger on my phone here. And uh, they're discontinuing AOL Instant Messenger any day now. So oh, no. rest in peace. Log into AIM one last time. Really. One last time. Send uh, a request for nudes. Mm -hmm. uh, Acorns, Coinbase, Robinhood, and Stash. Mm -hmm. uh, I've all got I, I, in Clarity Money started playing around with. But uh, Stash is a really cool app that like you basically in, it, it invest in ETFs. Uh, I'm down 1%. But uh, don't worry, I'll come back. Uh, I got on to Robin Hood, thanks to uh, one of our listeners, mm -hmm. and it basically mm -hmm. is like a, a platform to invest. I'm, I'm up today. Nice. I'm up. So let's see how much. Uh, I'm up $5. So I made 5% today. And then Acorns, I've, I haven't really played with yet. And then Coinbase, I bought uh, 50 bucks in Bitcoins and some Litecoin and Ethereum. Mm-hmm. And so I'm an investor now. Mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a high roller. You should get some dash in the market. Probably get some dash. I, he talked to me about dash and just uh, a little dash. You can do it just by a little dash. I'm go I'm going to based on that, but I just didn't. I couldn't do it on my phone. I had to do it on the computer. So yeah. And uh, I'm gonna look at some Zen cash. Helium, helium looked pretty cool too. I'd get some Zen cash. What is Zen cash? Which um, also, as I tell him this, don't go out like, oh, Harry, I'm not predicting the market. I'm just saying what I have, and I think you, he should have it too. I'm not giving. We're not giving financial advice. Thank you, Harry. Um, Harry, the ever cautious Harry Price, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Do people you don't screw with the IRS? And if the, you the financial <laughs> and if you want to get in on the uh, financial game, uh, hit me up at spangle at wearelibertarians.com or editor at wearelibertarians.com or message me. Uh, I on Acorns Coin uh, on Acorns Robinhood and Stash I get a referral link. So if you uh, want to give me some free money, then hit me up. Uh, I post it on my wall too those links. But yeah, uh, but once again, we're not financial advisors. You know, cannot right. be smart, but you can lose money. Don't invest in any money that you're not afraid to use um, to lose. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, just like we said, we're po uh, we're podcasters, not financial brokers. Well, no, no, no. I have no idea what it, when it comes to the markets. All I know is I'm up five percent. So. Pushing buttons. Um, no, 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 no. I did a five-minute Google search on penny stocks today, and oh, nice. uh, I'm I'm in deep. Mm, mm. So I'm in the game. Uh, okay, okay. No, I think that's what's cool about it is if you don't really know a lot, and, I mean, you – it doesn't really look like you can screw up your money situation and your savings. Very, and, like, Acorn, for instance, Acorns, basically just every time you go to the store and let's say you spend – Thirty dollars and twenty eight twenty five cents. Yeah. Okay. What Acorns will do is it will round up to thirty nine dollars and take that seventy five cents on the transaction mm -hmm. and put it into a savings account. Okay. And uh, so it, it kind of like back in the day, like uh, I think I got most of my uh, bitcoins using lawnmower that would round it up and buy bitcoins with that roundup. Yeah, and there's another one called uh, Capital with a Q that you can do the same thing and. Stash allows you to, you know, kind of automatically save money based on transactions. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of cool apps that I just kind of discovered as I got into the uh, into the markets, into the Bitcoin game. Yeah. So instead of so. like you went out and bought a fifty dollar game for fun, you bought fifty. You just put fifty dollars in the in the investment yeah. field and like let me play with this. I'm not. I'm never been good at saving money, and I have a hundred and fifty dollars saved off of one paycheck just because I was like, ooh, a game. Yeah. Like, it's it's taking, like, dumb people like me and giving us a financial future. Theory. So, like, in, um, so <laughs> instead of going out and buying the elite uh, Starfront Battlefront 2 from EA, you went out and just took that same amount of money and just started investing in the, in the marketplace. And, and, I, playing with and I made $4 today. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing is, like, um, the other thing with government, if they would get out of the way, more people would invest. Right. Like, that's what a lot of these, like, apps do was trying to do all the legal framework crap that so people can invest yeah like um the ideas of kickstarter and indiegogo that those places would be a lot better if the financial institution wasn't so 
keen on stopping investing. Like, if you can actually yeah. invest and get return on investment and become an investor that way to companies like that, like, I think Kickstarter wouldn't be the crap hole that it is. Right. And yes, Kickstarter is a crap hole. But no, they do this cool thing. There's a lot of crap hole things on Kickstarter, like solar freaking roadways, which is, to me, is the, is the second dumbest thing on Kickstarter other than that water bottle that um, makes water from air. That's the, right. that's the dumbest thing on there. But back to Bitcoin um, and wallet obfuscation. Uh, Rick Irvine mentioned in here, he's like, ID obfuscation is not anonymous. Wallet, dr- wallet addresses are public yeah. in Bitcoin. Stuff like that. Yes. That's why I said the, like, creating just a wallet out of thin air on something that's dark is the same way of just going out and creating a Twitter handle. You're about as anonymous as that is. Hmm. <laughs> it's out there. It's on Twitter. If, so, you know, you mention, you do anything, someone can find you, boom. That's so, about as anonymous as that. And the thing is, like you said, like that $150 game right there, like I said, right. that, let's say you went out and you bought uh, that same thing with that money. You went out, bought uh, World of Warcraft. Decided to sit there with um, um, James Neese and just grind all weekend for gold. You could technically, you, uh, there's a lot of, like, I think I posted the article, like, Wired article of people that would take WoW gold and use that to launder and move money around. The really? same way they're, descri- they're describing what the people are using with Bitcoins. So it's like, well, if they're describing like, what your financial institution that you can trade for real money, are they, uh, they want me to, dis- you know, just dis- disclose the, how much money I've gotten WoW? How about any other game? Uh, so, or, and so, are they so essentially, like you, you let's say you're selling drugs, uh-huh. and uh, you take, let's say you have t- ten thousand dollars, and you go to local game stores and you buy Wii points, mm-hmm. and then you go on eBay and you sell the Wii cards yep. for Wii points, mm-hmm. or you buy you buy gift cards for all these game points, and then you sell it that way, and then it becomes a legal transaction essentially through that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh. pseudo laundering because of this thing. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. They, that's the, the thing is like, then they want me to just go close all the money I've made in all of my games, or is this something just a, a gotcha setup thing that they want to set up because they want to make the law so con- uh, c- so convoluted that you broke the law, just let me go find it, right? You know, because I eventually will find a game that you have played, right? That drug dealers and terrorists because fear mongering because that's what we want to get people to think right that cocaine dealers and terrorists are using the bitcoin to transfer money out of it. even though it was like if they could get money in this country with if they can get people in this country if they can get guns in this country if they can get drugs in this country they can get the money out and the drug right. dealers trust me there's nothing stopping cocaine dealers they are a billion dollar industry if they were a legal industry quadrillion yeah they would be on NASDAQ deck okay right. so what you're trying to tell me is that uh, the drug cartels couldn't drop i don't know five million on a port and buy every freaking uh customs officer there no yeah yeah how about this how many thousands of dollars would some, some drug dealer have to have you to look the freaking other way or how about you just stop the whole thing and stop the drug war yeah let's, let's just start war. there let's that's the thing like these politicians never stop and ask themselves like Oh gee, uh, what's the what's the other di- like? They don't. I don't know. Yeah, what's the other direction right, about this? Right. How can we stop gang violence? You know, how about you know we increase the police presence? You know, how about we do another propaganda campaign? Gun how about, confiscation. Yeah. How about we? You know, I don't know. Make make it legal and make them put suits on. Uh, make, <laughs> but yeah. So then, final, uh, final well, thoughts on cryptocurrency. That's uh, cryptocurrency. Um, it's fun thing to have. Um, if you want to get some, get some. If you don't, don't. It's more of up to you. Yeah. It's 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 one thing. Don't like I said, like to spangle. Like don't put in more than you're willing to lose. Because at the end of the day, it is like any other currency. Yeah. It can go like be like. There's a lot of stuff that stops a uh, Bitcoin from going Zimbabwe. Maybe. Same with the American dollar. I mean, it's all made up. Right. It's all <laughs> like made it's, up. It's all based you know? on faith. Like. Yeah, and if you want real, but if you have cryptocurrency and you have bitcoins and you want to turn that into, I don't know, gold, silver, platinum, and get some real hard currency that yeah. way, you can go to Roberts and Roberts uh, Brokerage. They're in freaking Florida. They're freaking awesome guys. They're freaking anarchists. I've seen them at Pork Fest. I've bought cool. silver up there, um, which is great. Um, we even got some of my silver looked at there to make sure it was real. Um, there, uh, so if you 
that's what I like doing. A lot of people was like, "What's well, some of your cryptocurrency?" Because I was, used to get it up to a certain point, and then like, "Well, buying some silver." Right. And, and I like buying silver because silver is easier to move than gold is. Yeah. It's kind of hard to move gold. Mm. You know. Yeah. And I like buying it's the and, and I like buying the sil- and I like buying silver dimes and silver coins because with you can mix silver dimes with regular dimes, and idiots don't know the difference. Mm. So you can just have like a pocket. So like so you sit in the safe you can just have like a jar full of just regular dimes and silver dimes, you know. No one's just gonna steal like a whole thing of dimes. <laughs> or if they just reach their hand and like, oh you got a possibility of that I know which ones are which. I stole change from my parents all the time as a kid though to go buy uh, Butterfinger six packs. So. Which is yeah. I had to stop my stepdad. Where'd all my quarters go? I don't he, know. Dad. Um, um, he had some of his kids were going in, like some of his grandkids were going there, taking some coins off, and I was like separating them out. Like, dude, these are silver. Well, how much are they are? Took the silver calculator app. Go, hey, da da da. UK, you've got about a hundred dollars in silver here. Like, what? I was like, yep, these coins here. That's nice. Yeah, it's because of well, silver melt price. If you melted them down to silver, he had a lot. He has a lot of coins. He, him and my mother, they're hoarders. They collect a bunch of crap. It's it's. I love my stepdad and I love my mom, but they collect a lot of crap. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, so back to that. Um, I to me, it it, it just like they like they wanted to create laws just to catch people to give give me something, especially when they want to break somebody on something, um, because I, I I really do feel that you know they they just want to be able to if they can't bust somebody they will find be, they will find a millennial that have a game card and they didn't discuss their money that they had because. There's a lot of different games that, you know, you can easily move money across with it or just transfer that, you know, just by the ability to, let's say, you, to buy in-game crystals, you have to use so much out-of-game currency. So, so you used, so I, let's say I dumped $1,000 into the, buy some crystals, and I took the $1,000 in crystals and I turned them into gold, and I took that gold and I transferred it to somebody else. He then took those gold and transferred it to crystals halfway across the country. We basically did the exact same thing, but I used an MMO. Hmm. And that's the other thing is, what if drug, drug cartels got the money? They could run an MMO. They'd have the money to run one. Yeah, just yeah. to buy, a, I don't know, Nexon, because Nexon killed um, Ghost in the Shell Battle Assault. They barely got out of beta. I'm not bitter. So basically, just call your congressman, call your senator, and just say, this is stupid. What are you doing? It's also stupid, too, because, like um, like I said, don't, don't announce that you have anything. And there's the thing. They wanted, they wanted to regulate Bitcoin currency as property anyways. So yeah. if you report Bitcoins at all to the federal government, you're going to get boned because they see it as property. So it's basically if you had a house, right, and mm-hmm. last year it was worth $2,000, and now this house is worth $50,000, <laughs> Have fun with those taxes there. Uh, all right. Well, maybe with these tax reform cuts with, with property taxes. Oh, no, sorry. I'll let you go. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. Uh, final story. This just came across the uh, breaking news alerts. Uh, Trump will recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel on Wednesday and begin the process of moving the U.S. embassy, officials say. Uh, the U.S. embassy is currently in Tel Aviv, and we have long said Tel Aviv is the capital, uh, but... Everyone in Israel, everyone across the world, everyone who's Jewish recognizes that Israel, that the Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Uh, and so it's just been a political football because putting it in Jerusalem is the United States government and the force that comes along with that saying to the world and to the Muslims, Jerusalem is the capital. Uh, <laughs> and so this is a campaign promise that Trump wants to put forth now. People on the right, like John McCain, Lindsey Graham, people on the left, everyone. People in Jordan, like the King of Jordan, uh, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Palestine, everyone in the Middle East basically is saying don't do this. And it's been one of those things where foreign policy experts, the establishment, uh, the uh, the leaders of our allies are all saying to Trump, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And they're not saying it for, like, they're, a government is backed by its people, right? <laughs> and wh- <laughs> what? Not the guns and the tanks, but keep going. Yeah, in the Middle East, come on. 
Okay, a government ultimately is backed by its people. Yes, the government, the tanks help, but in in a third world country like the guns and tanks really help in a third world country. Exactly right, <laughs> but it's it's unstable. It's unstable as at best, and so and a lot of people in Israel are like don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. It's very popular in some quarters of Israel and not in others, and. Here's what you have to understand about Trump. It doesn't matter if everyone in the world says, hey, bro, uh, this is King of Jordan. Just, uh, what's up? Hey, you know, we have a really good relationship, and uh, you, the U.S. and Jordan, have been fighting all the Islamic radicals, and we have a very stable relationship and a stable country here in Jordan. And if you move the capital to Jerusalem, it has the ability to massively destabilize the Israeli... A Palestinian conflict, which has been kind of cool compared to all the ISIS shit. So don't inflame that because Jordan can't handle all that because what happens is Hamas and Hezbollah and everybody moves through Jordan to start mobilizing and then the shells are coming over into our country. And listen, we're bros, right? We just can't handle this right now. So please don't. We just don't need this right now. Okay. <clears throat> Hangs up the phone. No, I'm definitely going to do it. <laughs> and what you have to understand is that I Trump... I respect Muslims. <laughs> I love Muslims. I just do everything I possibly can to punch them in the face and tell them, fuck you. I love Muslims. I love to meet them in the capital city of Jerusalem. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, so, here's the thing. Trump, Trump is a, has no pretense, right? And that's one of the things that we love and hate about the dude. Uh, it, it, it's that we love that he he doesn't pretend to be the president of the United States and the president of the world. Like Donald Trump is doing what every other president has ever done, which is being president of his constituency, his people. And he's not trying to be a king. Right. And it's like he's just taking the respect to the office. It's just an office. He's yeah, right. he, he might as well say city council member or. Um, right. He's just he's like he, he's officer. basically like. Donald Trump is the Republican version of the black city councilor in your town that has been there forever that everybody just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, King, yeah. Kingfish, you know? Yeah. What I mean? like, yeah. Basically, like, if Rob Ford ma- became prime minister. Like, if Rob Kendall became president. No, like... It, it's, it's like Rob Ford. Right. So, Canada. basically, and I, here's why I say that. So, like, here in Indianapolis, like Duke Oliver... Duke Oliver is the guy who introduced me one time to the city council president as the president of all libertarians. Now, I love Duke. I think Duke is one of the funniest dudes ever, but Duke Oliver votes with the Black Caucus on the city council 100% of the time. He votes with the Democrats 99.9% of the time. You go to him, you know what he's going to say because he's going to say exactly what all the other Black Caucus members say, like uh, Maxine Waters or Conyers or whatever. And so what... What people on the right need to understand is that to everybody but you, he's one of those people. He's a t- he's like, and for for people on the left, like he's just the Tea Party president. He's the Sarah Palin of presidents. Like he doesn't care about being the president of the Black Caucus and the Navajos and the the Elizabeth Warren tr- tribe. And he d- mm-hmm. like he just doesn't he doesn't care about being my president. Right. Like, if I disagree with him, he doesn't care because he knows that he's just going to do what he wants, Mm -hmm. and there's going to be a large group of people that think like him that agree with him. Like, he doesn't really give a fuck about the rest of the world or anybody but his base. He cares about that 25%. Mm -hmm. And when everybody piles on and attacks him for that, what you do is you uh, you make him grow stronger. Mm-hmm. Because the people who are his base feel personally attacked when you attack him for this stuff. Mm. So what he's doing is basically trying to gain favor with American evangelicals and say, see, I told you, I'm delivering on promises like no other president ever has because I'm not playing the game. See all these muzzies over here who are all pissed off about this? Fuck them. you know. So that's really what you have to understand about Trump is that Trump doesn't have that fear pretend phony like Barack Obama pretended to be the president of all Americans and you knew that he was the president of all but the Bernie Sanders people like that's who he was doing shit for he wasn't doing anything for libertarians he was doing the opposite of what libertarians believe Mm -hmm. so 
he's just not a phony. And so we love and hate it at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it, and the other thing which is weird from it is uh, some huge Harry Potter nerd with it is like, just like um, Harry Potter kept saying Voldemort's name over and all the Voldemort, like uh, all the Death Eaters, you know, kept appearing, getting stronger, stuff like this. It's and they're digging their heels more into Voldemort. It's the same like this. Like, yep. They keep saying Trump's name. They keep talking yep. about him. They keep attacking him. But you know what? You know, if um, Harry Potter and keep poking the nest, and the Death Eaters stop poking the nest, man, they probably would have just died on like a Quidditch accident. Right. You know. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I brought up Harry Potter and my other point in this podcast. So, so basically, this is going to be a huge shitstorm. The left is going to lose their mind. Yes. Uh, the Muslim nations are going to lose their mind. Mm -hmm. Key allies are going to lose their mind. The foreign policy establishment is going to lose their mind because it's such a violation of norms. Like, yeah. this was one of the deals. You keep it in Tel Aviv because then if it's an official recognition of Jerusalem, then the Palestinians lose their mind, and then we have... Well, they, so, lost, they already lost that war, and they're lucky that you know Israel decided to yeah. walk some of it back if they're, if they're honest. So... And, but, you know, what did they expect? That Trump was going to leave them alone? Look at what he did over in Britain for a tweet. Or a retweet. <laughs> Sorry, we, retweet. Right. Like, and he also just, I don't think, has the mental capacity to, like, for all the 8D chess talk, I just don't think he has the mental capacity to, like, game play what's going to happen next in this area now because of this decision. Well, yeah, and he doesn't, like, I, I think he doesn't get, I mean, unless he's laser focused on something, that those actions will have so many different ramifications. Yeah. Like, you know, I have no, like, I doubt that Trump cares about Britain first. I doubt he really cares about what's, you know, where's the capitals at. Right. I just think he thinks it sounds cool, and he's probably heard someone say at a dinner party, well, the real capital is this. Yeah, exactly. He's exactly like your grandpa mm -hmm. who listens to Bill O'Reilly every day is president. Yep. He's just completely, he's Sarah Palin. He is yeah. Sarah Palin. Which I also hate is all those Rick and Morty fans With hating, a smaller hating dick. Trump. It was like, you like Rick? What do you think Trump is? <laughs> he's just not drinking. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I think if he dreamt and drank and burped everywhere, you'd be like, oh, this guy's awesome. Fun. And he's got a Morty. What do you think Mike Pence is? It's freaking Morty. <laughs> Morty. Final, Morty. Final thoughts. Um, final thoughts. Um I did bring up uh, this thing as, like, uh, when it comes to Flynn and anyone else, if you ever in trouble with the feds, don't tell them anything. Don't talk to them. Get a lawyer. Because the only reason they're talking to you, because they don't know anything. Because if they do anything, you just be in a cage. You be in a cage, and they would take you into court. So don't take the plea deal. They want you to. They want the, they want the trial to go smooth. Don't take the plea deal. Um, you don't talk to them. Don't give them anything. Don't say a damn thing. Don't agree to anything. Get your freaking lawyer. You do get a lawyer. Well, that's the part of the Flynn's problem is he was the government before. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, and he thought he, that's the other thing is like he also thought he was cool. Like other lawyers will tell you like um, I think I think Abdul talked about this. Where, like he will get another lawyer. He won't think he's smart enough and get another lawyer before he talks to like like if he got in legal trouble. He right. talked about that. That no, if I need legal trouble, I'm not talking to God. I'm getting another lawyer. And th that's the other thing is he was government. He knew all this stuff. So he thought he was smarter than started to know the game. But no, he should have just lawyered up. The, the, the instant it came up, screw the bad news, just lawyer up. And so, like I tell everyone, like if you get caught on anything, the reason they're talking to you because they want stuff out. If you don't take the freaking plea deal, you'll be able to get out on it because it's the reason they're freaking talking to you. All right, well. Um, and uh, another thing I want to give a shout-out to the Discord. Uh, hung out with um, Scootaloo and, uh, and um, Sweetie Belle on the Discord last <laughs> night. Uh, <laughs> stop it. I'll stop that. Um, yeah, well, so, yeah, last night I uh, was playing um, on Discord and I hung out with Stone and his uh, Cuban buddy. We got online talking to them. Um, that one thing I do, like, I, 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 I hope sometimes, like, Discord isn't too, like, frightening to some people that have never been on the Internet without, like, the censorship of, like, a MySpace or Facebook or Twitter that has that sort of, like, censorship on it. I'm used to being on, on the net in the 90s when everything was anonymous IRC chatting and people yeah. were just talking to each other. And that's, you know, that's why I love Discord because it's, it's close to being that again, but not all the way. So I hope it, you know Discord doesn't scare people that get on like wow what's going on like well, that's it's just very raw the feed is very raw inside there um, so like you know I try to keep other out, other rooms that you can go in so it's not that whole DNZ thing but the other thing I do like and I wish people would come more into Discord because the one thing I did do last night was be able to talk to Stone and other people to find out how they found Wall how did they come to 
to discover this podcast of We Libertarians because I know how I found them. You know, I was brought. You know, we were broad. Uh, I was looking for libertarian content, and we were broadcasting to get our podcasts are together on the same station. And I started listening, and became a huge fan. And I like hearing everybody else's on how they found Wall. It's a lot of people have very interesting and different stories on how they found it. Right. You know. Cool. And that's what the one thing I get from the Discord channel. I'm done. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank the following. First, let me say to um, Harry. Uh, Harry didn't know I was going to do this, but Harry, I keep pushing him to do his uh, single show. <laughs> do a Harry show. <laughs> people love Harry, and he's like, nobody wants to listen to the stories that I pick. I'm like, no, people like Harry. They want to hear the stories that you'd pick. So, uh, like, I'm taking a break from the 15th to the 2nd. And I want Harry to host a couple shows just to do it, maybe with some of the Discord people or something. So if you want to hear a Harry-only show or with a Harry with co-host or whatever, send him a note. <laughs> so let him know. Or get in the Discord. You can join at wearelibertarians.com. Uh, I want to thank the following people. These are the $10 a month Patreon subscribers. David Anderson. Don't Yes, thank you. Don't forget Patreon sign. I'm doing that. David Anderson, Rebecca Cash, Ken Walker, Ryan Clancy, Chris Lane, Brian Travis, Nick Economopoulos, Adam Herndon, Eric Neff, James Darling, Zachary Felker, uh, Rick Irvine, Mike Trant, Derek Mishu, Justin Mitchell, Jess Nixon, Britton Jandry, David Stovall, Eric Brightline, Sarah Potter, Eric Anderson, Joe Benavidez, Brian Kloss, Jeremy Franklin, Samuel Alexander, Joshua Laughlin, Reinhold, Chris Murray, Logan Knoll, John Brett, Derek Lynn, John Floyd, Mark English, Lauren Moss, Stone Aldridge, and Joshua Sexton. You guys are awesome. That list has obviously grown. Um, the $100, Christy Avery, Craig DaCosta, Jason Doolittle. Talking to Jason, uh, if you're a $100 a month subscriber, you get to come on the show. Mm -hmm. Jason's going to fly out. Uh, and actually join us here on the show. We're going to oh, go nice. shoot some. He's going to take me gun shooting for the first time. He's, uh, uh, everybody wants that ability, and then he's taking it. That's fine. He's doing he can, it. He yep. have it. Yeah. He's, he's, you're invited, so I need you to help me find a gun range here locally, and then we're going to go to Steakhouse, the Steakhouse. Ooh, ooh. Yes. Ooh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and uh, I know one off of Bacon Street. That's one, the, the shooting range. That's the Steakhouse. All right, yeah. We, and we got to find one with anchovies in the Caesar dressing for them, so... What, what our $100 a month reward uh, people want, they get. Uh, now, uh, <laughs> and uh, hey, just a reminder to some of you, some of the, the, the cards, make sure you check your credit card if it didn't process. So sometimes it doesn't process through. So uh, those declines hit hard in December and January. So we, we want to make sure that uh, you're, you're getting all the benefits and uh, that you're supporting the program. And if you haven't thought about it, please do, because we've got some really awesome stuff uh, that is happening on behind the paywall that mm -hmm. you need to be a part of. So thank you so much for joining us here on this episode of We Are Libertarians. My name is Chris Bangle. That is Harry Price. We thank you for joining us. We will see you Thursday. And until then, be good to each other. At least until right now, Spangle's talking to EA, and we're going to get Michael.